Hey, what's up, bookworms? We are back for another one of those things that us winners who have so much to do on Saturday night get to do Saturday <laughs> nights number five this time. My guests, we're just going to kind of go around the horn, and we always say ladies first here on Mike's Book Review. So Tori from Tori Talks, how are you this evening? I'm good. How are you, Mike? Uh, each day just gets better than the last. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm excited <laughs> to have you. Thanks for having me. And you know him. I know him as Jordan, but you guys know him as iWizard from iWizard. Jordan, how are things in the Great White North this evening? Things nice are great. Um, tis the season of mercy and charity. So I thank you very much for having uh, me on, deigning to have this small, humble little <laughs> channel uh, on the famous Mike's books. Uh, always, always my pleasure to talk to you and not about Song of Ice and Fire for a change, but it might come up. You know, I'm never against that. <laughs> so, and uh, you guys, uh, I think uh, probably one of the fastest growing new channels out there right now. Uh, I, the best beard in the game, as I put it. Uh, he is my Captain Riker. He is your Theo Rekindled <laughs> Reader. Theo, how are things in the great white north? Thanks, man. Yeah, really good. Really good. I'm actually literally we're just packing to go to Disney World over Christmas. So no I'm coming kidding. out that way eventually. Oh, man, yeah. that no yeah. kid life sounds sweet. Disney yeah, we're, uh, we're milking it because next year... Who knows, right? So now is that yeah, the California yeah. or is that the Florida one? Which one? We're is going Florida? to Orlando. Yeah, Orlando. Yeah. Nice. So you guys do anything trip. else down there? That's it. No, Universal, Disney World, Christmas and New Year's with some friends. It'll be fun. Yeah, that sounds like a blast. Well, yeah, a blast for me is sitting around talking about books and whatever else comes up. <laughs> but what I always like to kind of open up Saturday Night Nights with is kind of going around the horn and saying, what made you guys decide to flip that camera around and start saying, I'm going to talk about stuff. And put it out there for the world to see. Tori, you want to kick us off? What made you get into this whole booktube thing? Starting with the hard questions first, Mike. Yeah, um, yeah I think for me, I was a young mom. I started, I'm in the class of 2020. Um, so I've been around for almost a nexus. Um, I've been around uh, for a while now. And I think it was really searching for a kind of community. You know, I was a young mom, had really little kids and I loved books and I wanted to find other nerds. <laughs> so yeah. And I have opinions and I'm okay talking about them in front of a camera, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, it was really fun. My old videos are super cringy and uh, I had really long hair and <laughs> so it, it's been a journey, but I have loved every minute of it. Yeah, that's great. I mean, anytime I can get people away from my older videos, I'm excited about right. it. They are painful yep. for me to watch. And Jordan, how about you, man? What made you say, you know what? I want to give this a try. I can do this. Uh, so I've always been comfortable in public, speaking in public. Um, I was in a band for uh, probably a decade. Uh, so just feel comfortable on stage and uh, eventually, I decided to get serious about uh, books and reading and uh, majored in philosophy and then became a en high school English teacher. Um, and uh, I, I did a podcast about the classics for quite a while. Uh, I just love talking about books. I love fantasy and sci-fi. I'm also very big into the classics, uh, philosophy, uh, ancient Greek philosophy, that sort of thing. So I really like um, talking about fantasy and sci-fi um, thematically and philosophically and kind of diving deeper. Uh, I'd never be able to do what you do, Mike, because you read so fast and you just churn out these brilliant insights and uh, the, your videos are just so entertaining and pithy and you read so much. I'm the kind of person that will take a month to read something like The Stand and it takes me so long because I have to keep stopping and jotting down my thoughts and then by the time I'm done with the book, I've just got reams of notes of just stuff that I thought about. And it takes me so long and you can just keep it all in your head. And for me, it's kind of like figuring out what I think about these things and then finally getting it ready to share. So um, I think that's part of why I do it. And um, just really having fun. Uh, I've, I've had like two months off and finally getting back to YouTube this month. So this is kind of kicking, kicking my channel back off, Mike. Thank you. Hey, well, uh, you know, thank you for the kind words. Uh, all I'll say is, yeah, I can remember that stuff, but I can't remember like what I did yesterday. You know? oh, it's, it's kind of one of those things. And Theo, how about you? Because I am kind of jealous. I've been doing this for three plus years now. You've been doing this, what, about six, eight months, I guess? Yeah, right. <laughs> and your production value, your lighting, and your everything sounds and looks better than anything I still can do. So, uh, hey, wow, you started off on the right foot. You don't have to worry about that. Oh, my early videos were terrible. You know, right. A lot of us did. Or we were recording I appreciate on like that. Nokia webcam or something. 
Yeah, I know. I appreciate it. Actually, I mean, unlike Jordan, I never really got comfortable public speaking and stuff. I do a little bit of it for work and, you know, presentations and that kind of stuff working in finance, but never really something like this. I never really had any audience or, or put myself out there like this. Um, and so like a lot of people, I was watching a ton of booktube throughout the pandemic and all that stuff. And I found Mike and he carried us through a very difficult time. And through that, I, you know, met tons of people in the community and really was grateful for that. And I started reading more and more and found that I'm not a huge note taker. And I struggled to kind of remember things or remember more importantly, how I felt on certain books, maybe before going into another one. And I wanted a, a way to diarize that. But again, I'm not really a note taker or an annotator or whatever. And uh, I was engaging more and more with the community, talking, commenting, all that stuff. And I had a camera because I had done photography a little bit, uh, kind of as a hobby, and I really enjoyed it. I think I got like okay at it. I've done a little bit of paid work, never really video stuff. And I kind of, in combination with wanting to give back a little bit, diarize my thoughts, give back a little bit to the community, engage a little bit from another side of the lens, but also... Uh, to practice a little bit with the video and kind of the equipment that I have, learn how to edit, that kind of stuff for my own sake. That's kind of what prompted it. And I didn't really think I'd continue. I, I thought, hey, maybe this might be fun for a bit. But I, you just meet so many people. I'm sure, Mike, you understand. Like, mm -hmm. you just start getting that that rhythm and um, seeing kind of whatever value you can provide to people in, in whatever small scale I can is, is super fun. So I'm enjoying it. And so that's kind of what keeps me here. Yeah, with me, it was like, look, I don't know anybody who does these kinds of books in real life. And yeah. I didn't think there was that many people out there. So when I found this, I was like, my people, I found yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's 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 just something now I can't I can't remember what life was like before, really. Uh, it's kind of like before kids. I don't really remember what life was like before kids, but I don't remember what life was like before this community and talking to these people every single day, you know, that totally. I talk to just, just constantly. It's. It's really cool. So it's like one of those things where I'm like, yeah, I tell people, yeah, get off the internet, get out there and meet people. But I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to go talk to these people I've never actually met. You know, because, uh, it, it's more fun. But yeah. uh, now that you guys have all been introduced, I want everyone watching, stop what you're doing right now. Look at the description below, click on their channels and subscribe because they need, they need you to join them on this amazing journey that they're making. So with journeys, how about what are we all reading? What's everybody reading right now? Uh, I am working through, I'm actually in the a point where I started too many books at once. Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> yep. So, uh, I just cool. finished Dragon Mage by ML Spencer. I am currently reading Assassin of Grins and Secrets by K.E. Andrews and Legacy of the Brightwash by Crystal Matar. Um, I think that's it. Yes. <laughs> Jordan, you doing it? Besides the stand, we're going to talk about the stand, but don't worry. What what do you got next? What do you got going next? Are you just you, are you in between books right now? I'm actually afraid to talk about the stand with you um, <laughs> because I just feel the disappointment is palpable <laughs> uh, even through the computer screen. But um, oh no, 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 Mike. I you know as a school teacher, I'm finally on break and I've got uh, a pile of books to get to uh, over the next couple of weeks. I'm just finishing a biography of Charles Dickens. And I had this crazy moment that I wanted to tell you guys about. Um, I was I got home from work. I was reading this biography of Dickens, and Dickens was talking about how he really didn't like America, and he didn't uh, he wasn't having fun in America. He was doing like a literary tour and public readings, and he said, "You know, there is one city that I really like, and it's Boston." And then he said, "From Boston, he took a, tr a day trip over to Lowell, Massachusetts, which is where I live." And then he said. I visited, and I'm reading this, and I'm, it's becoming more and more surreal as I'm reading this. He said, I visited the Lowell Mills. I live in the Lowell Mills. They're converted condos, brick brick condos. And he said, I visited the Mill Girls. And I look out the window, and the um, Mill Girls Museum is right outside my window. So that was surreal and crazy, one of those wow. creepy, um, <clears throat> surreal literary moments. Um, but I guess over the break, I'm right now I'm rereading um, Peter F. Hamilton's um, – uh, Commonwealth Saga. So I'm starting with Pandora's Star. I've the only book I've read in that is Pandora's Star. So I'm rereading that, um, and then uh, it's Judas Unchained, and then the Void trilogy, um, and then I'm going to read Ashes of Man, which just came in the mail. So I'm really excited mm -hmm. about that. This is book five in the Sun Eater series, and then Mike, I'm probably going to do a reread of Storm of Swords. Nice. Uh, and so uh, maybe maybe you'll join me for that in like January. 
or something like that. I don't know. I don't when know about January, it? but uh, I think they're doing a big read along. I'm thinking about hopping on with them, but that book's so long, you know, it, uh, maybe it'll maybe, maybe just take your time with it. Just well, you join me for fire and blood. You join me for a game of Thrones. Yeah. Yeah, you no, join me for a clash of Kings. You're going to leave me hanging like that. No, not at all. Because if, if anything, I got to get on there and explain to Madison why Stannis is the one true King. I have no problems doing that. I will do that forever. I've been doing that fight with my wife for a decade now. I got no problems doing it with someone else, you know. So uh, it's, it's it's really really exciting. But um, Jason here says he was excited for your return, and then he saw your stand rating. So uh, the disappointment. <laughs> is... <laughs> what? Sorry, guys. You got anything you're on? You're uh, you're you're hot on right now, Theo. Anything you're in the middle of? Oh, I'm I'm having the you got you guys. Everyone's gonna hate me. I'm having the weirdest couple months reading I've ever had. Probably the worst, like not the worst, but the weirdest. I would say month. Like I'm just bouncing between everything. So. I'm two thirds of the way through Empire of the Vampire. I'm two thirds of the way through Lycanius, the third book in the trilogy. I'm trying to wrap that up. I just finished The Bear and the Nightingale and thought that was pretty, pretty good. Okay. Um, I didn't like it as much as I was hoping I would, but it was all right. And uh, I'm halfway through, well, not halfway through, about two thirds of the way through It <laughs> by Stephen King, which I started in October. So I don't know what the hell happened. That's but some as you know, you're in the middle it, of, man. So, yeah. so that's thank you for saying that. I see now I feel better because they're all huge <laughs> and now I don't feel like a loser. Um, but uh, yeah, they're, they're all just taking a while and I'm really enjoying kind of bouncing around, which I don't often do. I do a little bit, but I don't spread myself so thin usually. But right now I am. And the next book I want to start once I wrap up one of these or whatever, because I don't mind having more than one at a time, is I saw some people in the comments mentioning Nosferatu. I'm going to read that with, uh, hopefully, with Madison. And uh, that'll be kind of an interesting Christmassy vibe uh, to throw in the mix and stuff and shake it up. So that'll be kind of fun. And uh, I've never read anything. Well, I've read, uh, what was it? The Black Phone. And that's kind of it. So this will be my first like real novel by, by Joe Hill. So that'll be kind of cool. Outstanding. Uh, I, yeah. I too am doing Ash as a Man, but for some reason, Jordan, I am the last person that's going to get my physical copy. So I'm actually. I have, I have mine behind here. <laughs> yeah, everybody's yeah. got it. I just got my notification today that it shipped. So oh, I was like, wow. hey, maybe it'll get here by Christmas. And the reason that I, I'm saying this is I am one of those people who does prefer to read physical. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was kind of waiting for that. But uh, since I was like, well, this is the next book that I had in line. So I, I'm, I'm reading the ARC copy that I got six months ago. You know? <laughs> so, hey, at least I did end up needing it after all. But uh, yeah, anytime there's a new Sun Eater book, uh, got to get into it. And I got because I like to take my time with those books, you know, because uh, you they say I read it. so fast, Jordan. I feel like a slow poke when it comes to a Sun Eater book because I'll read like two chapters and be like, ah, that's all I can do for now. Because you know, like, <laughs> there, there they are. I mean, it's, 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 yeah. Yeah. Kind of the kind of philosophical sci-fi, I think yeah. you'd call it, where you, yeah. you got to think. You got to think yeah. a little bit. And I, I see everybody binging it on audio, and I'm just like, I'm jealous of you guys. I can't do that. Well, you know, what's funny about that, Mike, is that this uh, Christopher's mm. stuff is is easy for me because we have very similar uh, intellectual backgrounds. But here's what I don't understand. Speaking of Philip Chase down there in the comments, is how you guys plow through these uh, Malazan books. Okay, so that for some reason I still haven't finished. <laughs> I mean that that first book, Gardens of the Moon, conquered me, and um, I just don't know why it didn't click. I'm not. I think it's me, and uh, I I don't know. It's just so dense and um, so hard to follow for me. And so you may say that this is this is difficult, but um, boy, man, I struggle with. with I, I find this very interesting. If Jordan's having problems with not problems, but if Jordan. <laughs> I'm never going to read Malaza now. I don't know what, like. Oh, yes, you, you are, Theo. No, please don't like that. <laughs> no, have you read, Tori? No, no. Have you read the whole thing, Tori? What? Uh, no, I have gotten through uh, the beginning of Midnight Tides, <laughs> and I'm going to be rereading and then finishing the series next year. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. I, that I, one is I, the one that I'm on the fence with. Yeah. I, well, I, so I'm jumping on, and then I'm like, no, I can't. It's I funny, just, too, because Gardens is a really is a really tough book for a lot of people, I think, at the beginning of that series because it was originally written to be a screenplay, not a novel. Yeah. And so it, like, to me, I could kind of tell that it, it kind of was originally something in a different format. Mm -hmm. um, and I had no idea what was going on at the end of Gardens of the Moon, but I liked the char characters enough that I wanted to keep going. And then when I got to Dead House Gates, I was like, this, this is what I've been waiting yeah. for. 
yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's, it's rewarding, but it, it, is, it is quite challenging. It is, it is definitely yeah. a challenge. Well, Kendra Havoc says here is, wait, people read more than one book at once. How is that possible? Let me go ahead and finish her. I'm doing Ash as a Man. I'm reading Percy Jackson with my kid, which is a lot of fun. It's just you turn your brain off for this. It's just, yeah. you know, it's fun. It's having a great time. Good, great discussions between us. That's awesome. And That's I'm awesome. also working on Lonesome Crown by Brian Lee Durfee. So with me, it's like I can do it. I just have to kind of stagger genres. So I've got a sci-fi, yeah. fantasy, and a YA book mm -hmm. that I'm yeah. reading right now. For me, it's like when you get sick of one, instead of DNFing it, like Andrew over at Andrew's Wizardly Reads, I hope you're watching, Andrew. <laughs> uh, I, I just will be like, you know what? I'll just switch to this other book for a while because I'm starting to get frustrated with this one. Yeah. So I know it's not or, something- Or that, instead of taking a break from reading, right? Sometimes you're like, oh, yeah. okay, I've read a couple chapters. Switch I'm, I'm a little bit tired. Maybe you don't want to stop reading, but maybe you just don't want to read that book. Yeah, so that's I think what that's I how do. Burnout a lot happens when yeah. you try to force it, and that's why I took the Malazan break. And I get Malazan yeah. fans get so mad at me because I haven't finished the series yet. And quit pretending you're going to finish it. And I'm like, I got the same thing with Will of Time. I took a six month break in that. People are like, quit, quit pretending you're going to finish. It. I, I I don't want to read. 10 monstrous books like as fast as I possibly yeah, back can. Back to back to back. With, you know? So yeah. I don't think I could do it. Yeah, sometimes you got to take breaks. You know? I took a 10 month break between uh, Oathbringer and Rhythm of War. Like, oh, wow. I could not. I, I needed a break from Stormlight and yeah, just read Rhythm of War recently. Mm. What'd you think about it? Yeah, no, no, you're safe with me. <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I've said it on my channel, so I'm not worried about saying it on yours, but, um, yeah, it's okay. So for me, like I love world building and I love a hard magic system, but I don't need to know that much about how right. it works. <laughs> like I don't need like 400 pages of how it works. And I think that's what really pulled me away from it. I think it's one of his weakest <clears throat> books in general. Um, and I felt like some of the character work kind of got to a point where they felt like they were being kind of puppeted through the plot instead of them having their own agency, um, mm -hmm. which was, yeah, there were a couple parts I really loved before anyone totally Thanks. freaks out, <laughs> but, um, but I won't get into that for spoilers for anybody. No, it sounds like we're the same. I, there was lots of stuff I liked about it, but I just yeah. said, I don't need it. With me, when it comes to magic systems, I don't need to know how the sausage is made. They can do magic because they're magic. You know, they're magic yeah. users. Good. <laughs> I'm good with it. I don't need to know the science of it. And I know there are people who love that. You're right. They exactly. love that. But that yeah. combined with I didn't really like the flashback character in that book where I was like, this is starting to feel like a chore. Plus, I was like, this feels like a recycled storyline you've already used in Will of Time, Brandon. You know, that's all. That's all. That's all. <laughs> side. That's all. Side. But, um, yeah. 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 And yeah. You, you two with Braid Stormlight yet? No. Not, not yet, yet for me. I read the first book way of kings and i'm personally wondering if either of you guys can sell me on continuing to to read uh his stuff not to like pile on shit on brandon sanderson i like him as a person i like his work ethic and his ambition uh the scope of his of his vision and the fact that he's really not afraid to go for it in terms of his world building and the sort of um, grandeur of his plots and the scope of his character arcs and things like that. So I, I like him and I just, I remember reading way of Kings and definitely being blown away at how original that world was and mm -hmm. how genuinely meticulous he was about covering every possible base and just being so impressed with what he was doing with Shallan and Kaladin and, and Dalinar. And, um, but I have to say, I personally, I'm more of a George R. R. Martin guy. And I think yeah the way I can best explain why Sanderson is hard for me is because I'm more of a George R. R. Martin guy. Uh, when I'm reading song of ice and fire, I feel like I'm in a real world. It's a mm. fantasy world. Sure. But it feels like a real fantasy world. And for me, when you enter a tavern in Brandon Sanderson's books, it doesn't feel like you're actually hanging out with say rough battle hardened men in a tavern who are like yep. gambling and drinking. It kind of feels like you're just always watching like a Disney version of quote unquote rough hardened battle men in a mm -hmm. tavern. Right. And it's like when I'm reading Brandon Sanderson, I'm not trying to be really mean here, but I'm like, have you ever been in a tavern, Brandon, or on a ship? Have you ever <laughs> hung out with Marines? Cause they don't act like the soldiers in Mulan. Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, um, no, so I like him so much and he's so talented and he actually writes books, uh, which is more than you can say about a lot of other fantasy writers. But um, like Tori said, sometimes it's TMI and sometimes I'm not sure where it's going 
And sometimes I feel like he writes himself into a corner and then isn't sure how to get out. And then it's kind of clunky. Can you guys like contradict me and tell me why I'm being a jerk? Uh, Cause I, I want to like Brandon Sanderson and I'm just having a hard time. No, I like Sanderson, but I, I will say that like, if, if you're, staple is george r. r martin it's probably gonna be a right. tough sell it really yep. is i think if you're more someone who like if you were really into will of time you'd probably really click with brandon sanderson i think not just because he wrote him because i mean it's, it's a similar style yeah i think so uh i i think there's there's room enough for for both authors but i will also say if you didn't really care for way of kings i don't think it's going to get you know even though i think the second book's better it's I still the same world and it's still yeah. the same characters you're you, you pretty much got a yeah. dose of what his writing style is like. It's, it's a, cl a cleaner world. Is that a fair way to kind of describe it? Like, you know, there's there, you don't get the kind of gritty atmosphere that you get with something like A Song of Ice and Fire. Yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of people really love that. Um, I really liked a lot of the character stuff he did in book one and two. Um, but yeah, he's definitely not a like nitty gritty <clears throat> kind of world building writer. Theo, you read any Brandon Sanderson yet? I'm, I've read, yeah, I've read Mistborn. I've read, uh, well, the Era One. I've read Elantris years and years ago. I just got it, the 10th anniversary edition again to reread it because I'd like to kind of go through the Cosmere uh, again. I've read The Emperor's Soul. Um, I read a couple chapters of one of the YA books just to kind of get a fl flavor of like how that was written and how that differs. And then I was going to read Stormlight earlier this year, but then I realized that First of all, it's, they're hard to fit in. And I thought as soon as I heard that there was going to be a delay in, I think, that fifth book, I thought, okay, I'm going to jump on this Cosmere read-along that's happening kind of at the end of next year. And that'll lead us kind of into the release of that fifth book. So I haven't read Stormlight, even though I have them kind of all behind me. Um, and I'm actually very interested to see where I'm going to land with George R. R. Martin because I'm reading A Song of Ice and Fire for the first time starting January. So yeah, with Joanna's read along. Yeah. That's yeah. That'll weird. be very interesting. I'm, I'm super keen. That's what I'm looking forward to probably the most. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited so. for, it. I mean, that's, that's maybe my favorite fantasy universe. So it's, yeah, uh, I'm very excited to see so many people. So many people stopped whining about the TV show, stopped whining about the books, not being completed. And they're actually Let just, like, just going to shut up Let and it read go. it. That'd be yeah. great. That's yeah, great. Guys. Great. Um, so we were doing all the introductory stuff. I tried to keep up the questions, but I couldn't. So if you put a question in the comments or something, and uh, I didn't see it. Feel free to go ahead and put it back. But I am going to try to tackle some of those now. I think Jane has a good one here. What book are y'all planning on starting the beginning January 1st? Do you have a plan? This is tricky because uh, January is stacked. Yeah. January so this stacked. is one of my. Oh, so what else? So what are you reading in February? Because it looks like January is covered. Bam. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have that, but it's not on the schedule right now. Yeah. Yeah, that's January, really February, March for me, probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Uh, I'm doing, we're going to be doing the Red Rising reread. So Red Rising, nice. number one, is going to be my my uh, my first book. Jay, that you means got I'll one probably end up rereading it, too. <laughs> let, I'm let excited to reread it because I think I read that original trilogy so quick that, mm. like, I don't, I've I forgotten more than I remembered, honestly. Uh, and also the first book I was kind of iffy on because I felt like I kind of got sold a bill of goods and I was reading just, you know, Hunger Games on Mars. Yeah. Obviously, I know it doesn't keep going that way, <laughs> but I was getting that feeling with book yeah. one. Yeah. Now that I know, you know, to trust the process because I know what the series is currently and I love it. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like maybe I'll probably enjoy book one a lot more this go around. Has your wife jumped onto that second trilogy she said she's now else. starting the second trilogy or, or now it's uh, four books she's yeah. not starting the second half until he finishes it okay she okay. has ptsd from george yeah you know, i she got her the first one right? Fire when we first got together and she's never forgiven me so. <laughs> yeah yeah you got a book picked out jordan um it's funny that you guys mm -hmm. held up shogun because i've been considering reading that um I minored in asian studies and i took a bunch of courses in like japanese literature and stuff do you guys know what like time period the book takes place you don't have to name the period just like do you know if it's like ancient or more modern like 19th century or like further no, back no, than it's, that? it's it's earlier than that i think it's like the 17th or something like that to be honest okay yeah. i believe um i could be off by like 200 years but <laughs> but, it, but it was written uh but it's it was written like uh recently it was, it was written yeah it was 70s. written in the 1970s yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've been thinking of, of, of reading that and I may actually uh, join along. Uh, when are you guys starting reading that? We're supposed to do it in, in January with the, with the caveat that a lot of people are probably going to take more than just one month to read it. Alan was going to jump on it. He really wanted us to read Shogun and then Taipan because a lot of people read Shogun and don't continue. Um, and his whole thing was, I'll jump on it 
but you, I need, I need more than just a month and you guys need to promise to maybe try that next book at some point. So he's on it. Alex tall guy reads, we were planning on doing it for a while. A lot of other people kind of jumped on and it turned into kind of a, kind of a thing. And so, mm -hmm. uh, January is when we're starting, but there's no pressure to finish that chunky boy. I need to do that. 1600 is the year. 1600s, right? Oh, 1600 yeah. is when it okay. takes place. Yes. Great. Yeah. Yeah, I may uh, do that, and then I was pro, thinking Elric I, I, too, maybe I, Elric. I saw that cover, and I had to, I had to have it, but I, I it's not on my schedule yet. It's a beautiful but, uh, one. Yeah, it's, for me, it's just every time I look at it, I'm just like, that's a monster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and I'm, I've already got Lonesome Dove on my schedule this year, which is that's a big equally one, as yeah. big. And I said, nah, let's just. That's kinda, a good one too. It's a good book. You know, so so yeah. so, so we'll get to it when we get. Let to me it. let me ask you guys. So I. I'm finishing a bunch of big books. They're going to trickle into kind of, you know, the end of the end of the year while I'm on vacation and stuff. Shogun, I might not jump on right away because it's huge. I'm going to take in, you know, I'm going to do it in, in February as well, <laughs> probably. So I'm not going to jump on that one first. So I have two options here. So you guys tell me what to pick. I have a Game of Thrones. Obviously, I'm part of that read along, right? And I also have the first live ship book. Which do I pick right away for 2023? Game of Thrones. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, look, I'm loving the Realm of the Elderlings. She's five for six for me now, but okay. a, a Song of Ice and Fire is just untouchable for me. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't okay. get better. And, and again, I've never read Game of Thrones, so this will be my first time. So it's not like it's a reread. So both yeah. first times, that's what you And since you like to read six books at once, I, I say start on Game of Thrones as early as possible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know I'm going to read all of them at the same time yeah, anyway for four five, months, so it doesn't really matter. books at once. <laughs> Who cares? Yeah, I haven't read Live Ship yet, so I can only okay. speak for Song of Ice and Fire. So. Okay. Same here. I, I want you to read a Game of Thrones as soon as possible. Okay. Okay. Cool. Oh, there you go. Done. Awesome. All right. I'll say, but I bet yeah. Live Ship was, was was very very good. And I think Philip I was saying wait. his first book was going to be uh, the next the next uh, Realm of the Elderlings book because him and I are reading that at the same pace because he's going to that panel that I started and uh, we both only read as far as Live Ship so far. So can't think of a better reading pal to have than Philip because he'll keep me honest. He'll definitely make sure I don't let any slide <laughs> on the schedule because that guy. He makes a schedule. He sticks to it no matter what. Yeah, right. damn right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So lots of fun stuff in here. Lots of, I'm never going to read Game of Thrones because he won't finish it. You know, and I get that. Yeah, I can I understand that, totally. that. And then I've heard, and the crazy thing for me, from, from, from the seat of someone who's never read it, is <laughs> I'm shocked at how often I hear people say, it's my favorite series of all time, or he's my favorite author of all time, or it's absolutely worth the journey, even though there's no ending. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's like mind boggling that that can be the case. I, I know that they can be okay books, but the fact that some people consider it so high on their list, Despite knowing it, that it's not done. And they're like, no, what we have is, is so good that it was still one of my favorites. I find that incredible. And so I'm so curious what that attraction is. Yeah, like, Jordan I, alluded to it, but yeah. yeah. Go ahead, I was going to I was going to say, I don't know if Mike and Jordan would agree with this, but I think because there's so many really strong character POVs in A Song of Ice and Fire that have, like, there's a bunch of endings, even though the series itself isn't. Okay. One, okay. If that makes there's sense. satisfying, like, pieces to throughout there this whole arcs, thing, right? There are arcs, I feel like, that okay. kind of, yeah. Span well, that the helps. Series that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I go through the pros and cons for the series, the only con I have is it's not done. <laughs> like that's wow. it that's my only complaint about the series as as a whole and it's same with a uh, dark tower with me is that like uh yeah i had problems with book six and seven but as a whole it's so amazing it's still a top five fantasy series for me of all time you know wow so it, it yeah. can happen like that you know if i use a grading scale like jordan like he's got like these little tiers of his grading scale and i'm like that's yeah. mine's thumbs up or thumbs down bro <laughs> <laughs> i'm, I'm kind of the same I yeah. quit rating books on Goodreads because people got so mad because basically, unless it's a book, I think people will be reading like 50, hundred years from now. I won't give it five stars. And they got so mad. You're bringing the aggregate down. I'm like, it's so, their rating system. I'm not starting mine. to get that problem. a little bit too. I'm starting to get people who go, Oh, but, but hang on. You gave that other book. You gave that book four stars. Four stars and this one three. So they're starting to like compare like and I'm like, well, I don't know. I had a beer it's when subjective. I rated that book. Like shit. So <laughs> everything now gets a no rating. Watch the channel if you want to know how I feel about the book. <laughs> right. You know, and yeah. I stopped writing reviews on Goodreads and everything. Yeah, yeah. It can get a little messy. It can get mm -hmm. a little messy for sure. Yeah. Uh, Nexus, no, no one's ever told me that I talk like Jeff Goldblum, but I'll take that as a compliment because uh, yeah, I, would. I like to impersonate yeah. Jeff Goldblum a lot around the house. Him and Christopher Walken, I do. My wife 
loves it slash hates it. She hates it when I do it, but she would miss it if I stopped doing it. So, <laughs> oh, I'm sure she would, Mike. Yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> well, it's like it's like dad jokes, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. Her and the kids can't stand them, but if I stop doing them, they'd be like, "Why'd you stop?" You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> you just get used. You eventually totally. beat them into submission with these things, you know, and they can't totally. Help it. Okay, you guys will learn one day. You'll do this <laughs> one day. Yeah, it is a compliment. It is a compliment. Absolutely. So, awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Like if you guys watch uh, Thor Ragnarok, basically the way Jeff Goldblum acts on that, I, I'm like, that's pretty sure he's not acting. That's probably what it's like if you went to his house and like hung out. That's that's pretty much the way he would probably act for sure. Yeah, he's great. So yeah, it seems like a lot yeah. of people stopped yeah. rating books on Goodreads. Unless they're Alan and they give everything five stars, you know. So uh, <laughs> hey, I hope Alan's doing. He's doing better. He's doing. I heard he's doing yeah. a lot better. You guys don't know Alan got into a really bad car accident. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, we yeah. crushed we crushed it on his uh his GoFundMe and he's uh absolutely he's looking he's looking, he's looking good. So Christmas is saved, I hope. So yeah. I hope yes. and actually Mike, I, I I'm gonna be in Orlando, like I said, and we had been talking, I was heartbroken because we had been talking literally like two days before about getting together for dinner and high fiving really? and, and going out and stuff and meeting. And uh and then that happened and he messaged me yesterday and say, Hey, I'd still like to, I'm I don't know if I'm gonna be able to to go down there, but if I if I do, we got to meet up. So he sounds like he's doing much better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. That's, that's, that's awesome. He uh, yeah. he messaged me. He's a uh, he. Uh, we we sent him all like a get well soon kind of video, and uh, apparently it uh, mm-hmm. he tugged at his allergies a little bit. So yeah, <laughs> it's like well, I hope it made you. It was like good. It was good tears, you know. Hopefully, the better than the tears that you know, I got mad because I saw I saw the actual article about the actual accident. I was like, oh my god. So he's actually quite lucky. Yeah, yeah. Know, Some over, of the photos uh, get, get by. You know. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I'm such a sissy. I'd probably stay in that bed for, you know, I, mean, I, can, I like twist my foot and be like, okay, I got to stick my foot up for like the next five days and work from home, you know? So, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's, it's something, but, uh, yes, Alan is a teacher. He's the mm-hmm. best teacher. He grades papers on live stream. It's amazing. You should watch it. It's <laughs> great. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, anybody got you about book related gifts? under the christmas tree that you want and or are giving this year uh are you that person because we had like a, a white elephant at work and i'll always bring a book and people aren't interested like at all but you know what it's like hey i gotta get dune into more hands i gotta yeah. do it I gotta do it <laughs> i don't really have a whole lot of people that i that i gift book things to and i think we're all probably similar well not everybody i'd like to think that some of us have in real life book friends but a lot of us don't and this is kind of where we come for our bookish stuff um so yeah i don't think i could make a friend happy by giving them a a, a fantasy book but um i I do like receiving them and i've received a couple so far and i think i'm going to do a video on some of the some of the bookish stuff i've gotten uh so far and probably hopefully over the holidays that'll be really fun so yeah yeah for me i have a wish list on amazon you guys can see it that's what i'm hoping to find under my tree this year yeah yeah (laughs) But no, I don't mean that in like, please send me something. Please don't. I, it's like I've, I've reached the point now where it's like when I don't get stuff, my wife's like, oh, thank God, you know, because uh, yeah. I did a shelf tour recently and I am kind of like, you know what? I'm really close to a thousand, a thousand books in here, but I'm like, I got nowhere to put them. So, you know, it yeah. probably wouldn't be responsible. But when has book collecting ever been responsible? You know, like, <laughs> yep. like I get people every every book haul, like, you know, are you ever going to read all this stuff? I mean, I hope. I hope I live that long, you know, but I don't buy books because I'm going to read them immediately. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's yeah. not what book collecting is. And I'm like, I don't have any other collecting hobbies. I don't collect Blu-rays or bobbleheads or any of that stuff. You know, it's like, I got one thing I collect and I don't mm-hmm. feel bad about it. You know, sorry, rant over. <laughs> I don't rant very much. I have, I have one cares? thing to say, Mike, check your mailbox. Ah, of, yeah. oh, okay. All right. Speaking of, of books that we gift each other, check check your uh, P.O. box, my friend. Okay, great. I was going to do it today, but they close on the weekends at like three, and they're closed on Sunday. So I'll, I'll check it on Monday. So are they open you. over the holidays? Like, are you, are you going to be not able to access it for like a week or so, or like how does? No, that... no, they're open. It's a, it's yeah. a it's a it's a mom and pop kind of shop, so so they're mm-hmm. open. You know, uh, just cool. on the weekends they like to they like to keep bank hours. Yeah, uh, yeah. On, on, who on doesn't? <laughs> yeah, right, right, yeah. Theo, you made me happy with a book, and I'm your real friend, damn it. You are a re- real life friend now, Madison. That's true. I, I've said that. There's That's several true. people on my on my Discord. I feel like I would call them real life friends, even Absolutely. though we've never met and probably will never meet in yeah. person. You know, yeah. I don't, unless we have like some big weird convention or something. And I don't think the booktube will ever get big enough to where you know people you know that aren't like 
YouTube celebrities, I guess you call them, would be going to a convention. I don't even know. I don't even know if I would go to a booktube convention. I don't know. You don't think you would, Mike? Really? I don't know. Was... I think I'd find the one person who wants to punch me in the face or something. You know, because <laughs> you, you you try to be as po- I at least I, do, I try to be as positive as possible mm-hmm. on here, and I still find I still find myself pissing people off. You, and you I can't make everybody happy. Yeah, 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 and I don't even know why. And I mean, some people just get like overly angry and aggressive about it. So yeah, yeah. I said I, I feel like I'd find the one person who like wants maybe to actually, go like, wants as to... go in a disguise and then like suss it out and then like I know what I'll do. Feel comfortable. I'll, I'll grow this little scruffy. I'll dye it black and I'll go as Theo. <laughs> no one will buy it. You won't like, make no, it home, bro. I'll give it a shot. <laughs> yeah. You know, we talked about uh, like a, not really a convention, but like a meetup or something that right before the virus that's trying to be named happened. And, you know, I don't know. It'd be interesting, but I feel like I'd have to do like a controlled thing, you know, only an invite only kind of list. Cause I, I don't know. I have no problem meeting people, getting along with people and all that stuff. But like I said, you do this and you find like one person that you've made angry because, you know, you I don't responded that like when yeah. everybody says anything nasty, I don't know if you guys have got the point where you start getting nasty comments yet, but you guys are getting bigger. It'll start happening. Mm-hmm. Just and bring bodyguards. I'll, I'll just be like, yeah, hey, thanks for watching, because I'm like, I'll, I'm not going to engage with someone who's just being overly yeah. nasty. And I'll find that I'll be the, the one person that like pissed them off, you know, because I told them to have a nice day, you know, basically yeah. smiled in the face. And that'll be the one person who wants to, you know. Stab me or something, you know. Yeah, God and Brent, they'll be your bodyguards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brent's a weightlifter. He'll uh, he'll take care of things. I think. There you so. go. Yeah. So. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. See, lots of lots of interest in a, a booktube convention. Yeah. I think it would be really cool. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah it'd be really cool. We we toss that idea around. I mean, I, you know, with everybody that I talk to, we always kind of toss that idea around. I think it'd be really cool. Um, so yeah, I romanticize <laughs> meeting all these people one day, but it's, it's tough. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. one of those things where you know, not everybody's in the States and even if they right. are, it's like, I traveling is so expensive right now, but, uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't and know. It's, it's funny you say that. Cause in my head, I'm like, Alan, like I'm going to be in Florida. He's like, dude, Orlando's like four hours from me. Like what? <laughs> it's, he's in Florida, but like, it's not the same, yeah. you know? Yeah. So in my head, yeah, it doesn't work that easily. Are, are you allowed so. to, uh, to, to, to travel freely now? I know Canada had tougher restrictions than we do. Yeah. 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 For the most part, it's, uh, it's all cool. Yeah. All right, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Because, like yeah. I said, just trying to just trying to send something through Canada, I was like, why do I got to fill out like eight forms? It's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. It, it's wild. I don't know if it's like that to send anything out of Canada, but to send anything to Canada, it's like, my gosh, really? Man. Yeah, it's all eased up now. Yeah, for the most part. But Madison, you do not get mean comments on my channel. That was just because Wheel of Time fans were miserable because of that Wheel of Time adaptation. Hey, where'd you guys stand on the Wheel of Time adaptation? Haven't watched it. Haven't read it. Same. Ah, not yet. Oh, okay. really? Mm-mm. Oh, I'm not alone. That's amazing. Nope. <laughs> do either of y'all plan to read it? Nope. I do plan to read it, and that's why I didn't watch it. Um, because I was like, I'm I'm gonna I just don't know when. And then I, I always get these mixed reviews and these mixed like I, I don't know. I don't know. I read yeah. the first book and um I started the second book and I was kind of enjoying it, and then I did watch the first three episodes of the show and just mm-hmm. kind of tapped out and lost interest. Um, but, uh, maybe it's cause I didn't read more of the books. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What, why did you stop reading the books? Jordan? Um, well, I read book one and the beginning of book two, if I remember right, there was all this I said, I stuff. I just felt like it was a little much and I wasn't, right. I don't know. It wasn't, it wasn't clicking with me as much. And so book one felt, I of the world felt a little derivative of Tolkien. I know I'm being, uh, not being yeah. very original here. Um, and then book two uh, started being less derivative. And yet I wasn't sure I was enjoying it. Like, um, uh, you know, Robert Jordan's the kind of writer who, as Mike has pointed out in the past, you know, he'll he'll describe someone's outfit for a couple of paragraphs and then he'll describe a tree branch for mm-hmm. another couple of paragraphs. And I could never really tell the characters apart. And I would go online and people would be like, well, my favorite character is Matt and Perrin and and they're so great and this and that. And I really couldn't tell them apart. And maybe again, it's maybe it's my, maybe I've got challenges up here. Uh, but uh, I just, uh, when I'm really not enjoying something, I try to give it some time. And then if I'm still not Loving it. I'm shitting on everything tonight. I'm going to be <laughs> all the hot takes. Yeah. yeah. Nexus, you just said you haven't seen a lot of negativity on my channel, but now listen to Jordan. Jeez. God. <laughs> you know, honestly, to be fair, like I always say, it's, it's 99 to one positive comments. In fact, it actually surprised me when I started a booktube channel 
is before I did this, I did podcasting and we talked about, you know, movies and TV shows and comics and stuff, you know, that, that fanboys get mad about, you know, that's just stuff that people just fight about. I mean, you go on Twitter, they fight about anything there, but it, it, that's kind of like an example. So when I switched to just talking about books, I told my wife, I was like, I was blown away that it was so much positivity in the comments. And her response was, well, stupid people don't read. I was like, that makes a lot of sense, you know? So, <laughs> but uh, no, it, it, it really is. It really is. Like, I mean, I'll, I'll get messages from people, emails, letters, all kinds of stuff, like how I got them back into reading and stuff. And mm -hmm. that's great. I don't try to undersell that by talking about it. I just try to prepare people for their channel starts getting a little larger. Don't don't let those people ruin your day. Okay. They're just they're just not nice people. Don't 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 worry about it. They're just like they see someone else having fun. They're like, hey, how can I ruin this person's day? It's just it's sad. You know, the Internet was should have been that thing that brought us all together. And it's just, you know, kind of somehow driven us further apart. But, you know, well, I always think good. about like any time that I spend on somebody who is being a troll is time that I could be spending responding or, you know, garnering a conversation with somebody who has a positive comment about something I'm reading, or even, even if it's not positive, but just has something that's a differing opinion. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. I don't have a problem having a discussion about differing yeah. opinions. That, that's that's important. That's important. There's a place like, for that for sure. There are people yeah. that hate my favorite series. That's okay. Like it doesn't bother me, I guess. <laughs> like, I don't know why that's such a yeah, like Jordan thought I was going to be mad at him because he didn't like the stand as much as me. And I'm like, man, <laughs> maybe it's because I grew up really, my coming of age, as I call it, was Dune was everything. Still is, you know, but that's a book that's very, very divisive. People either love or they can't stand it or they tell me that it's boring. You know, those kind of things really crushed me when I was younger to the point to where now when someone says they don't like a book I liked, I was like, ah, no, it's a shame it didn't really work for you. So no, yeah. I mean, would I have loved you to have loved it like I did? Of course, <clears throat> of course I would have. But you know what? doesn't bother me if, if, if you didn't love it. I mean, I'm loving these. Aren't you happy for me there? I'm loving the Drist books. Those are a lot of fun, man. So, you know, hey, it's it's cool. We have plenty of other things. Nice. We have plenty of nice. to talk about. So, you know, it's, it's not a problem. Let me say something positive, okay? Because I feel like a total downer. <laughs> oh, I'll yeah. Wait, wait, check this out. Check this out. Uh, he needs to make some videos titled Why Your Author Sucks and just have these rants about them. There, you've got a market. <laughs> you've got a market cornered. Yeah, that's pretty much my channel anyways. No, Mike, let me tell you, <laughs> this is how I fell in love with your channel. This is serious because you were talking about how positive your community is and how how your experience with uh, BookTube has been good. When I started watching your channel, the first video I clicked on was this crazy video where you stacked up all the Wheel of Time books and they were surrounding you and you looked so excited and I pressed play and then I ended up watching like nearly all of the Wheel of Time videos and I hadn't. I had read I had read the first book and I was thinking in my mind, should I keep going? And ultimately, my journey stopped after the first book. But I remember watching those videos and thinking, here's a guy who's older than I am uh, right. by quite a long time. <laughs> I mean, let's let's be real, guys. No, thanks. Bro. Here's a guy who's like he's an adult. He's got kids and he's. He is so giddy with enthusiasm and excitement and earnestness too. There was um, there's a kind of um, Gen Z slash millennial like irony that was missing from your channel mm -hmm. that I really appreciated. This just kind of guileless, um, earnest nature that you have and the way that you were delivering these reviews. I was like, that's what I felt like when I started when I fell in love with reading books. This is what I felt like in college when I started reading more and more. Mm -hmm. It's that giddy excitement and you haven't lost it. That's a very yeah. good way to explain that, Jordan. Yeah. That's a very good way to articulate it. You haven't lost it. Tell me there's still very like Gen Z on my channel and I'm doing things right because I can't think of anything <laughs> yeah. I'm less like. Yeah. So when people are like, I can't believe you don't have like 300,000 subscribers. I'm like, oh, well, BookTube does still lean quite young. Honestly. Yes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, and yeah. I'm never going to dance and do skits and do all these background graphics and stuff. I'm just, you know, fixed camera angle. And that's just that's just what I'm going to do. So I kind of want to go for that coffee, coffee house approach. Like, what would you talk about with your friends at a coffee yeah. house? That's kind of always been the, the approach I want to go to or the bar, you know. Well, that was something I was going to say, Mike, is like some of the thinking about some of the channels that when I was building mine and figuring out, okay, it takes you a little bit of time to figure out what you want your channel to feel like, right? Because mm -hmm. you're trying stuff. And um, I've always loved, my favorite booktubers are always the one where I feel like I've just pulled up a chair. We're having a conversation and it's very relaxed, very low key, you know, just kind of having that friendly conversation. And that was something that always really inspired me about your channel that I've tried to kind of replicate on mine because I love that feel mm -hmm. of just having a chat. Yeah, that's why I didn't fit on TikTok because I'll go on TikTok and like everyone's like singing or doing a skit. And I'm just like, that's, I mean, I love books. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm not dancing about it though, you know. I mean, I saw I'll, I'll, I try to let my passion go through them of what I'm talking about, but I I just didn't fit in yeah. book talk, I believe it's called. So I've tried twice. I'm just like, don't think I'm ever going to get a foothold here. They're just not interested in my type of content. I'm just that old guy. Oh, someone let their dad have their phone and then make a TikTok <laughs> video. You know? But uh, Unlimited Read wants to know you guys' favorite books of all time. So. You're in the you're in the speed round now. Favorite book ever, Theo. You know, okay, I know I'm gonna fuck this all up. I'm sorry. Uh, I, <laughs> I I hate answering that question for a couple of reasons, but the main one is I feel like I'm on the cusp of reading some of my all time all time favorites, and I just this question. Not only that, but mentally, like I just the favorite question is really hard for me. But I can give you a little bit of a sneak peek, maybe into like my favorites of the year, which I'm starting to think very very strongly about. And I'm, I'm in the last, I would say third to maybe quarter now actually of it. And that is gearing up to be an absolute favorite. Another favorite book of the year was kingdoms of death. Christopher Rocchio, that one blew my socks off. Um, there's a couple other ones. I would say favorites that I've, that I've uncovered over the last, like very recently, uh, the warlord chronicles was a favorite <laughs> completed trilogy that I have discovered and I am just in love with it. So that's a favorite trilogy and a couple of favorite books of this past year. Well, it is my second favorite book of all time. So stamp of approval. Tori, yeah, you got that, that's, I already book. know. I just, I'm reluctant to say that because yeah. people are going to be like, yeah, I haven't finished it yet. So, but no, I can, no. I can guarantee you it's going to be an absolute favorite for sure. Yeah. You have one Tori? Uh, one? No. Um, <laughs> uh, the, the favorite question is so hard for me too, because I feel like I have an answer for like multiple genres, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Um, for fantasy, Red Rising is up there. Uh, Gentleman Bastards by Scott Lynch is one of my favorites. And then uh, Malazan. I feel like with Malazan, I say it's one of my favorite series. I have not finished it yet, but I'm not concerned <laughs> at this point, mm -hmm. having read four plus books of it. Um, outside of fantasy... Frankenstein's a huge, huge favorite of mine. I love that okay. book. Uh, White Fang by Jack London um, was one of the. I just read Call of the Wild this year. Should I read White Fang too? Yeah. Okay. Can I rant for like two seconds? Absolutely. <laughs> That's what we're here for. We got no time limit. Okay. Go for it. So, really, thanks, Theo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, I. This is something that drives me bonkers. Whenever you see the classic Jack London like books in Barnes and Noble and stuff, it's always like Call of the Wild and White Fang. That drives yeah. me absolutely bonkers. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with Call of the Wild. It's fine. White Fang is, in my opinion, so far superior really? as far as I loved the it. character of White Fang is one of my favorite characters of all time. Like, wow, wow. brilliant. Damn. Um, so whenever people, I saw that you were reading it on your channel and he's like, oh, Dang it, he's reading Call of the Wild, which is fine, but also read White Fang. <laughs> is, it, is it like a, is I, I it love a Call of the Wild, so yeah, or is it like it's a, a completely different book? Okay, yeah, interesting. And what I love so much about it, and I would say I read it when I was very young, and I would say White Fang is one of the most formative characters for my early writing mm -hmm. career, easily, um, wow. because the character progression of this nonverbal animal character is just brilliant, in my opinion. So. Wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah, All I right. love that book a little bit. <laughs> so, I, so I can read that just as a, just on its own. Yeah. It's not very like long. A long yeah. time ago. Yeah. yeah so yeah. is it like, is it like a it. shared universe? Was he like having like cr ambitious crossovers? At the I don't the... think so. Okay. Um, I mean, yeah, it's, it's definitely an older book. So I know a lot of people have some issues with some of the themes in it and stuff, but I think just as a character study, it's absolutely brilliant. But there's no buck. I love no. Buck. Uh, okay, no. I'm sure I'll probably like this one. I too, love but... I love Buck, but move over for White Fang. There's no competition. Yeah. Kids there. have already said like, we showed them the Call of the Wild movie, and they already said that uh, yeah, next dog they're they're naming him Buck. No question. So, <laughs> but yeah. okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah. But okay, all right. Well, I'll put uh, White Fang on uh, for next year for my one of my classics for sure. Yeah. Oh, it's... Jordan, I think I know your answer. But uh, favorite book of all time, you have one. Uh, you probably don't know my answer on this because oh, uh, this is going to just be more fodder for Caitlin to say that I don't uh, like fantasy. <laughs> but um, uh, I actually love um, uh, like um, modern suburban fiction. So I like um, uh, like John Cheever and John Updike and Richard Ford, uh, just normal people. Uh, John Updike said that his his um, 
The reason that he wrote was to give the mundane its beautiful due, meaning to make ordinary life seem romantic and interesting. And but I would say my favorite author of all time, and I'd like to make, Mike, a recommendation to you, specifically to you, because I know and love your channel and I know what you like and I know that you'll like my favorite author of all time, and that is Charles Dickens. Mm. So, um, and anyone else listening, I think, Mike, you should read Charles Dickens. Uh, I happen to know that one of your favorite genres, if not your very favorite genre, is the coming of age tale, whether that's fantasy literature or not. And I'm telling you, there is no better writer of coming Mm. of age than Charles Dickens. Dickens is so good psychologically at conjuring up feeling what it's like to be a child he's really able to get in the head of a child what it feels like to be little in a big and scary world the pacing Mm -hmm. of his novels is exquisite he just writes with such a passion for the for the poor and downtrodden but not in a way that's kind of indulgent or cloying or over the top he just writes about ordinary people with such compassion and feeling and verisimilitude he is a realistic novelist and his characters are just so full of life, they're unforgettable literary creations. I would recommend to you write this down, Mike. Great Expectations. Read it. Is about you've read it? Yeah, read it in high school. Yeah. Okay, read it again though, because in high school, there's this kind of perfunctory way in which high school students read, which is like, oh, it's been assigned to us. Oh. But read it now. I can confirm I- that that's true. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've read and, uh, David Copperfield, A Christmas Carol, and Great Expectations. And I started to tell two cities never finished. Okay. Well, what a buzzkill. I was going to recommend David Copperfield to you as well, Mike. Um, well, well, but wait, I have a video on my it. channel about best uh, first lines in a book. And tell okay. Two that's moment. true. All right. Yeah, this is good. Um, and then read Bleak House. If you haven't read that okay. yet, read Bleak House. Um, and I could recommend more, but that's enough for now. And by the way, Caitlin, um, Lord of the Rings is my favorite fantasy novel and uh, song of ice and fire is number two. So I do like fantasy. I'm just very picky. Yeah. I, I just watched the Muppets Christmas Carol. So now I'm as smart as Jordan. So easy. (laughs) (laughs) That was a great story. You are, you're correct. Well, another reason me and Jordan clicked is because, uh, Buffy, the vampire slayer is both our favorite shows of all time. So yeah. Yeah. He's Jordan point, did some great videos on that. I was watching Buffy at the time. Yeah, and, yeah, and that was, yeah that was good awesome. stuff. It's good yeah. stuff. We got to have just like a on a. Uh, if I ever get back to Mike's media reviews, we got to just have like our our best Buffy episodes and just make it like a series. Just just go yeah. all over it. Uh, so, have you guys pegged down your top book for 2022 yet? I have, but I've got to be that prick who says, "Watch that wait. video <laughs> coming out in a couple weeks." <laughs> I know. I was just thinking that too. I can't give away. I don't know if we book. we should give it away. If you've watched the channel, you probably figure it out. I mean, I talk about it constantly, but yeah. uh, it was rather a surprise for me. Yeah. Uh, I didn't. If you would have said the beginning of the year, that that would have been my favorite book. I don't. I don't know. So I don't think anybody wants to give that away because that's 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 good content. We can't give that away. Yeah. That's good content. But I think we. Yes, we all have lists. I yes, yes I have. I have pegged down my best book of the year. Yeah. Yeah, I think and I'm the year is not know. over. The year is not over. Yes. We're that's still true. reading. That's We're still true. reading. Yeah. So we'll I see, see another Empire of the Vampire. I'm glad some of you guys are checking that out because I know a lot I'm, of I'm reading people that didn't that want right to try now. it. Yeah, yeah, I'm reading that right now. Are you liking it though? Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> are you being a twat goblin? God damn it. <laughs> I I was loving it. And and Mike, you you know that like you you either you either mesh like you either like Jay Kristoff's writing yeah. or like oh, you yeah. don't. It's like you there's no in between. So you either like Jay Kristoff or you're Alan. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> right. I was really vibing with it. Um, I'm still enjoying the world. The characters, uh, I'm a little less endeared to Gabriel as a character than I thought I would be at this point. But and, and there's some dialogue and some kind of humor that is just grating on me a little bit. I appreciate it, and I'm I'm that funny guy. Like I I get it and I appreciate it. But some of it's like okay, it's at the expense of the plot moving. Like sometimes two people are in, in, in um, having some dialogue and then he'll have to like step away and like make a quick joke. Like the person speaking will have to, and I'm like, just keep like, just keep going. You guys are talking about something very important that's happening right now. So it, those little things, those little criticisms are starting to be highlighted for me, but I am enjoying it. And I think it's going to be uh, a fun ride and I'll continue with it. I do like Jay Kristoff. So All I'm right. just not as enamored as I thought I would be. But I'm only like two thirds of the way through. I'm so, just glad people are giving it a try because so many yeah. people were like, "Oh, I'm not even going to try it because it's got a vampire without a shirt on the front." You what I, what I, I would like to say, <laughs> what I would like to say, is that uh, people that say he can't write or that his prose isn't good, whatever, that's not true. 
you you can like the way he's writing or not or the dialogue choices or the humor or not but his prose is actually quite good Mm -hmm. um and philip would argue that prose is more style and not you know quality of writing but i think that he he can write and he's choosing to write a certain way. And sometimes that works for people. Sometimes it doesn't. He's Here's my thing. I'll have an opinion. And then Philip will give his opinion. I'll be like, no, Philip's right. Yeah, <laughs> I'll go with that too. <laughs> uh, yeah. he, he's, he's way too smart. That's, that's the thing. Is like, I, people be like, oh, yeah, you have so many so many interesting thoughts. And you really go in depth in these stuff. And then I'm like, I go on Philip's channel. I just feel like I, I'm a second grader. I'm just like, I'm so stupid. I shouldn't be here. Right? Like, we were talking about Beowulf. And he'd gone this long oh, diatribe about why yeah. this part was brilliant. And I was just like. Yeah, I like the part where they beat each other up. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like such a simpleton on that video. But, you know, it, it, it's good. I, I like learning, you know, and I feel mm. like when I'm talking to Philip, I'm learning stuff. So mm -hmm. that's why I'm great that he's going to be doing a Realm of the Eldlings with, with me. What is everyone's favorite movie adaptation of a book? And Mike, why is yours Running Man? <laughs> well, you know, the funny thing about that is, is Running Man is one of my least favorite uh, Richard Bachman, Stephen King books. I, I, I didn't really care for the book that much. I like the ideas but I thought the writing was just okay. The characters were kind of meh, in which I expected a lot more of that. But it was also, he was writing those when he was a teenager, you know? And the movie is nothing like that, but I love it because, I mean, I grew up being an Arnold fan, so why, of course mm -hmm. I wouldn't love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, totally. I'd say my favorite yeah. movie adaptation is probably uh, Fellowship of the Ring, I think, because I went into that not expecting, I mean, seriously, I'm in the theater opening night for Fellowship of the Ring. This is going to suck. There, there's no way that they can do this. And I think we got to the Mines of Moria and I'm just in tears and everybody's like, oh my God, are you okay? And I, was like, I can't believe they did this. I can't believe he's actually done this. He's actually pulled it off. Wow. So yeah, I don't think I'll ever be able to get that same feeling of just like, oh my God, this is a dream come true. Mm -hmm. Like I did with Fellowship of the Ring. So how about you guys? Wow. Same, same on uh, uh, Lord of the Rings. Definitely um, just amazed at how Jackson is able to perform like a magical act of synthesis and break those books down and cut things out of the books that in the long run. Yeah. Like some fans are going to complain that Tom Bombadil isn't, but you don't really hear that much. Like he just, he knows exactly how to put everything together. Uh, I find it amazing that each film is what like three hours long, Mike. Am I, yeah. Is that about right? And uh, For the theatrical runs. Yeah. Yeah. They were like, just those are the only here. ones. <laughs> so elegant that 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 prologue to the to the first film and just yeah. how smoothly everything goes also i have bad taste in in film i think because no one agrees with me on this i really like um roman polanski's uh version of macbeth um i think it's really cool and psychedelic and i also like joss whedon's much ado about nothing mm -hmm. his rendition of much ado about nothing yeah, no. with all the actors from buffy uh, and Angel and um, Dollhouse, and he basically puts them in his house. It's filmed in Joss Whedon's house, and um, and they just do much ado about nothing. And I'm aware that it's not even the best much ado about nothing, but I am biased. No. You know, it, I just it, personally it, as much like as people it. have legitimate complaints about Joss Whedon. I'm like, dude writes brilliant dialogue. Yep. And when you took, you're gonna take. I was like, okay, well, you're gonna take his strength away, and you're gonna be doing you know dialogue that's you know pretty much been written much to do about nothing born I, to do much those to do about those nothing. those actors like i said those actors are just like my tv family i've, I've, I've loved the buffy verse for so long so yeah i was i was i was all about that brent uh hey just want to let you know that you missed something uh jordan has assigned you to be my bodyguard if we ever have a convention so <laughs> it just makes that's sense. what you missed it just makes that's sense. what you missed yeah. you get to be uh yeah you get to be my bodyguard but yeah lots of lots of love for much to do down there uh who else has a favorite book to movie adaptation? Anyone? Anyone? Go for I have, it. Yeah. I have two. I'm going to give two kind of weird ones. They're completely different and for two different reasons. One is because I read uh, Jurassic Park last year and loved it. And I was like, oh, wow. Like, they're so different. The movie is so iconic. The book is incredible. They both did something very interesting. They're not the same, but they both did, you know, what they intended to very, very well. Um, and I just remember growing up and watching Jurassic Park. It was just awesome. Uh, and then again, I never read the book until recently. So that was really cool. <clears throat> Another one is, um, and, and I think this one really nailed the emotion and like nailed the book, I think as, as good as it could possibly have been. And that was a man called Uva. I watched the, uh, like the Swedish movie that they made reading that next year. And it was excellent. The book was excellent. I really liked it. I thought the movie was brilliant. 
and it just nailed it. It just yeah. The it. people on my server have finally beat me down about Frederick Backman. I'm like, fine, yeah, yeah, I will yeah. read it. I mean, I mean, one of my patrons actually even sent me two books. I'm like, okay, okay, yeah. I'm going to do. A, if we send it, you uh, enough of a book, you how does it how does how does it pronounce, man? Called what? Uva. Uva. I always say Ove. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I used to say Ove too. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but it's it's Uva. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Tori, you got one. I have. I'm gonna try to condense it. Um, so one that I thought of immediately when Jordan was talking about Charles Dickens is the 1960s uh, Oliver Twist musical. Um, mm. Artful Dodger is one of my favorite characters of all time. Love him, and so I thought Jack Wilde's portrayal of him was absolutely phenomenal. Um, the Outsiders by S.C. E. Hinton is another big favorite movie adaptation yeah. of mine. Um, and then um, I'm actually going to go over to the anime side of things and the manga side of things. Uh, the live action Rurouni Kenshin films are absolutely phenomenal. So if anybody's an anime fan in the comments, those films are like should be the standard for making <laughs> manga into live action. Wow. This is a great one. Me and my wife still argue about Apocalypse Now because I love that movie. I think it's my, my favorite war movie. And she can't stand it because when she was in college, they had to do Heart of Darkness for something. They had to study it, and she hated that story. And I'm like, well, you're wrong. And I, I tell all the time, I'll put it on and be like, you're going to watch it until you learn to love it. So that's that's one thing. And oh, it's I just thought cool, It's not cool about Aragon. It's not cool. Here's the thing is I saw Aragon before I read the first book. Mm. And I left the theater being like, eh, it's not so bad. you know. And I look over, and there's like these 10, 9, 8-year-old kids bawling because that movie was nothing like the book. I was like, okay, maybe it was pretty bad. I'm not really sure. So then I read it and I was like, did they ever read this book? So yeah. But How about 2001, sure. a space odyssey. Now I know the film was made based on Arthur C. Clarke's the Sentinel. Right. Uh, and then he writes 2001, a space odyssey, but that, that may be the best film adaptation it's one of those things where everyone's heard of the film and you may not even know that it's a book because this film is so good and so powerful um yeah i don't know have you have you guys seen that i've seen 2001 but i've never i've never actually read the book same yeah i've only read uh, childhood's end by rc clark which i loved which was amazing but uh i've never actually done 2001 i think it's because the movie 2001 is i i loved it up until like the last 20 minutes and i'm like i don't think i've ever gotten high enough to understand what happened at the end <laughs> okay of that movie. sometime yeah. i'll explain it to you okay i'm teaching it right now in a film course at school right i look we'll forward talk to about it at some do point i need to get high first or I mean, yes I yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Prerequisite. Says, oh the ending of that movie is like incredible i'm like i don't get it so yeah i would love to have that explained to me so yeah. Mm. Yeah. Doctor Sleep answers. is a great adaptation. Yeah, so that's yeah. a rare case where it is better than the book, in my opinion. So, because yeah. he did The Impossible, he made a sequel to Stephen King's The Shining and Stanley Kubrick's The Shining, and he somehow he made it work. So, yeah, that's a great, great pick. Gray Mile is another one. That's a really good one. Shaw I just Shaw watched Shaw. that recently. Uh, I know, I know. Everyone tells me you're gonna love back when he's gonna assassinate your feelings. The same thing everybody tells about Robin Hobb. Oh, she's gonna make you cry. And I'm like. You guys, I don't like being sad, you know, so please, you're not giving me a good sales pitch yeah. here, but you know, I think I it's... don't, I actually don't know if you're going to love Frederick Bachman, but I think, I think a man called Uva is the best place for you to start. Okay. I think you, I Great. think you might want to have enjoy that. And if you do, hopefully there's some momentum there. First yeah. quarter, I, I was like, I'm doing some standalones this year. First, I'm going to be doing run by Blake Crouch, but the second one that I have planned is going to be a man cool. called Uva or whatever you say. <laughs> Well, Mike, you and I will be in the same boat because when I asked, I had I asked twelve of my booktubers slash reading friends to give me a recommendation for next year, and Theo's uh, choice for me was also a man called Uva. So mm, there you go; it's a good one. I like. All right, that. see now, if Philip saying "Heart of Darkness" is a tough read, then maybe maybe my wife is right. Maybe maybe I can understand why she hates it a little bit. But you know, I I liked it, but I also was into like I was into like studying like heavy metal lyrics and stuff at that age. You know, maybe that, maybe that's why it clicked for me. I don't know. I don't know. So yeah. lots of great, uh, great movie reviews. Uh, or, or, I am excited uh, to read it, Theo, by the way. A lot of movie awesome. adaptations Good. down here. Harry Potter, like the first two movies are literally page for page. They're literally yeah. page for page. Yeah. Yeah. Really That's another series. I've never <clears throat> read the books, but I've seen all the. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on stuff. a second. What? I've never <laughs> read the Harry Potter. I have the first two on my shelf because I'm like, <laughs> I should, I'm going to read them. 
Are you just serious? So that I can talk about it without people being like, well, you've only watched the movies. So, yes, I'm going to I read did this with Percy Jackson. You never read Percy Jackson? Like, I'm doing it. It came doing out when I was in my 30s. You know, of course I haven't read it. So reading it now with my kid, I feel like I'm well, writing along. And now I'm like, okay, now that I'm a book collector and kind of a snob about it, if I'm going to own the series, I'm going to have to get the box Slytherin set. If I'm going to be, of course, hundred you know, percent. Yeah. Well, you haven't read it, but you know you want to be Slytherin. All right. Uh, I am Slytherin. There's no, you know. <laughs> She's like, I was born. There's no, there's no want to be. <laughs> yeah, because he's always like, no, I'm Gryffindor. No, he, you know, he's that age. He wants to be the I, good guy. But then yeah. I'm like, yeah, but you look just like Draco Malfoy. So. <laughs> <laughs> you guys read Sword of Kaigen? I'm going to. I haven't and i backed yeah. the kickstarter Same. Like, i bought a, i bought a awesome. 70 dollars version of the book even though i've never <laughs> yep. read it. You know, that's what like, we do yeah well yeah. i was like i people were like oh you didn't donate to the brandon sanders kickstarter I was like the guy got like 40 million dollars i think right. he's okay yeah. i didn't you know, either i, like, and I, I wanted to back someone myself. smaller so yeah, i, yeah, I yeah. backed michael j solomon a few times and I was like, okay, I'm going to back this person, even though I don't, you know, it's because yeah. I like to help out the smaller people. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I, I have know. the book, but I, I, I couldn't quite but get I... to it. And when the, when that was announced, I was like, I, I, I know I'm going to like it. That seems like a good value and it's an author I'd, I'd like to help. And hopefully yeah. that book works. And so that's kind of, yeah. Same. Well, reason. that's one of the positives of having a group of people in your book reading circle that know mm -hmm. your taste really well, because yeah. all of the people that I know who have read it, who know me are like, <laughs> You're going to love it. You're going to love it. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. See that here, here's how it works. Uh, when you get a, a little bigger is you half your audience will tell you that you love, you'll love it. And half your audience <laughs> will tell you you're going to hate it. So it's like, all right, I can't wait to see it. Like every, I was kind of joking about this on that panel that we did. Is it every single new Robin Hobb book I pick up? People are like, Oh, I don't know how you're going to feel about it. And I finally just said, are they going to say that with every book? And so apparently, apparently. Mm. Yeah. We'll see. You know, so half you guys are telling me I'm going to love Bachman. Now the people are saying, is it Bachman or Bachman? Am I saying it wrong? I Bachman? say Bachman, but I don't actually know. You say Bachman, I think Richard Bachman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, never read Harry Potter. Here's the thing about that, Tori. If you decide to, you could read it in like a month, the whole series. The whole series I could probably read in less than a week. It's, it's, <laughs> it's so easy. And here's yeah, the thing. Yeah. I hear a lot of people will be like, oh, I think I'm just like too old for it. And there was one friend of mine who's 10 years older than me that was like, I don't have any interest in reading that. And then he was at work one day at work. And that's when he found time to read. And they had like a box set of the Harry Potter books in the lunchroom. So he started reading it and he was like obsessed with it. He couldn't stop talking about it. I was like, yeah. see, it's not, it's one of those weird series. that just kind of transcends age. It's weird. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tori, do you, do you listen to a lot of audiobooks? Forgive me. I don't know if you. No, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> I'm learning i'm i'm trying to do it a little bit more i am listening to one right now that i can't say because it's a christmas present <laughs> um yeah, yeah. but i struggle with retention i'm not an auditory mm -hmm. learner at all so i really struggle with retention like mm -hmm. i got to a part in this book that i'm listening to right now and it's like two-thirds of the way through and i'm like wait wait what? i thought that person died like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like you know so it's it's hard for me to that retain it yeah the reason why trying. i ask is because these have incredible audiobooks uh the oh, stephen the fry Potter's. narration is incredible oh, i listened yeah. to some samples and that's the reread i'm probably going to do because i'll nice. probably just put those on audio uh and i'm going to read from this illustrated edition as well and i might collect them as well because why not they're beautiful because i'm so jealous when they talk about audio people in jordan yeah. i just i can't do it and i'm jealous because I but for i would love to when i've got like when i'm cleaning in the kitchen for an hour i would love yeah. to be listening to a book instead of listening to my kids yeah. scream at each other you know I yeah. like that. <laughs> same and, and, and there's a there's a jim dale narration too so there's like two incredible incredible but different uh narrations of i think these. that's when so, you know that your series has made it when you got two different audio narrations for it right yeah, yeah. 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 and they're yeah. both gangster yeah. yeah. see now we got brent and madison both saying they don't know if i'm gonna like the next uh realm of the eldlings book so, so i'm just saying this is just gonna happen the whole series for me i think i yeah. hear people love tawny man Yes. Why are they saying you won't like it? I'm curious. See, I'll tell you why. And they're going to okay. tell me I might be wrong. But here's why. Because I didn't like the third Farseer book. So now they think that I just hate Fitz and I hate every. It's not. Oh, because it goes back to Fitz. Yeah, I understand. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. I, I Who knows? That's a good adaptation right there. I know 13th Warrior is statistically one of the biggest box office bombs of all time. But I think as far as Crichton goes, it's actually a pretty good adaptation. Yeah, it adds some action stuff, but you know. It's Antonio Banderas with a sword. Watch it. It's good. Yeah. Jordan's like, I'm not sure about that. Is this I was Viking? Watch that. Is, is this the uh is this 
Uh, Eaters of the Dead is the is the Vikings, right? In the Fablon where he was uh, with the Vikings, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And what basically his Warrior? retelling of, of Beowulf. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. When yeah. you and Philip talked about it, I was going to to watch it and then and then read it, um, which I don't know <laughs> if that's the right order to do that, but. <laughs> Here we go. See, now I got another person. I'm positive, Michael, like Donnie Man. See, this is what it's like. It's what it's every every single Robin Hood book is going to be like this. And yes, Madison, I know, I know. You guys talk about audiobooks on the Discord all the time. I'm just like, so what's yeah. going on on Twitter? You know, <laughs> because I don't have anything to add to it. Where let me support uh, Madison for a second. Audio, I have found. I used to be only eyes. Audio mm-hmm. is like anything else. It's something you can get better at. <clears throat> yes. um, human beings should be good at audio, given that we uh, our first kind of mode of uh, consuming literature was listening to oral stories. Mm-hmm. And I feel like you would have been really good at that, Mike, if you were forced to do it. So for me, the way I got into audio is I had an hour and 10 minute long commute to work, mm-hmm. uh, which was really grueling and horrible. And I That's said- And this is when my wife was going to Cornell. And so we were in upstate New York and there were no jobs and I had to drive really far to get to any job. And so I would listen to the only way that it was bearable was to listen to audio books and you have to train yourself. And at first you're rewinding all the time. And then eventually (laughs) you figure out, you just figure out uh, skills and tools to like cope and, and then you get better at paying attention. And I do think it's something that you can, um, that, that is not kind of just ingrained or, genetic or anything like that you can get better at it yeah that makes i would sense. agree yeah yeah, yeah I, think I think it depends right. you Go can ahead. still have a preference but you can mike's like nah, get at it. <laughs> I have nah. Been too many years blocking out my wife and kids i just can't turn it off you know yeah. so and it's the thing is it's, it's i will be like well hey what happened here and then it would be like stupid it's in the, did you even read the book you know that's what i'll get because i'll i'll, I'll miss something and i think about something like malazon how the hell do people audio malazon there's so many names and places, and it, it, I just don't get it. Could never but I'll always that. say in my comments, I can tell who's audioed it and who's read it. If they spell all the names wrong, they're an audiobook person. Yeah, right. If they spell <laughs> the names right, they're 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 a reading person. I think. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, is audio coach is that a thing? Being an audio coach. Oh, okay. Now, Matt, I was listening to the Sandman audiobook. <laughs> Because I can follow along with the comic book uh, mm-hmm. while I was doing it, so I was that it was a really cool production, and I think James McAvoy is awesome. But uh, yeah, that's that's a really neat idea. But I, I've heard that they have like those graphic audio ones like that too, where they have like that. that I was just on with a Fantasy Files podcast. They were talking about the graphic audio ones where they like have like it sounds like a movie. Those are movie. awesome. I did miss. I did some of Mistborn that way, and that was incredible. I was like, wow, I can't believe that this is a thing. Uh, what about Mike? What about immersive reading? Are you are you that much faster with your eyes that that just can't work? Or... To me, that's just a distraction. If I've got someone whispering in my ear, okay. I'm just like, why? I've got the book in front of me. Just read it. You know, right? I don't right. Know. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's just that's just a, a thing. But I, I think for like a for like a like I said, like a comic book or something, that's a neat idea. I didn't even know they did, did audio for comic books. That's that's really interesting. It's kind of news know. to me, actually. Yeah. Mm. To try try a reread. Yeah, some people have told me that uh, like something I really love. They go on and on about those those uh, it's the guy that does the first law audio books. Stephen uh, about yeah about those. I was like, that's a story I've read three times now. So maybe yeah. I I could or or Lord of the Rings or something like that. Maybe yeah. or that's Dune. I know inside out. Dune yeah, I think okay Dune. I think they do like a I full a cast or something for Dune. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's really neat. Yeah, it's funny. It starts out as a full cast, so they like trick you. And then like a third of the way through the book, it's like not it, full cast anymore. It does change, Jordan. It gets, yeah, it does change. And some of the voices, I think, maybe that's why, because the voices are done now by like a few, fewer people. I do remember mm-hmm. that. Yeah. I don't know. When I got time to use my headphones, I just, you know, I just like to listen to heavy metal, heavy metal yeah, album to keep myself awake at work. You know? so, yeah. <laughs> coffee plus heavy metal keeps me awake. Yeah. I will say that is something I noticed with the audiobooks. Like I'm, the one I'm listening to now is uh, done by an actress that I know and like. So it helps when the voice is familiar. Like hmm. if I do do, so I haven't read the officially read Lord of the Rings yet either. And I'm kind of wanting to do the Andy circus versions because I think having that familiar voice yeah. and somebody that I'm familiar with already is going to really help that retention. Um, Cause yeah, I have ADD and if I'm listening to something and my eyes can go wherever they want, 
there's I forget I've, about it. I'm like, oh shoot, I just missed a whole chapter. <laughs> I think I've heard about those uh, Andy Circus Lord of the Rings audiobooks. I've heard he really nails the Gollum boys. <laughs> I try. I try. Um, yeah, the audiobook narrator to me really matters. <clears throat> That's actually one of the reasons I like um Scott Glasgow's channel, Bald, Bald Booktuber, because mm -hmm. he's someone who listens to audiobooks. And when he makes videos, he's constantly talking about audiobook narrators. And because of my commute, I have a shorter, yeah. but still a commute to work. And so I really value like a good, like it really matters. Like uh, yes. if, if you look up Charles Dickens, you'll have 10 different narrators that does that do every single one of his books. I have to listen to Martin Jarvis. Um, uh, it's the one that, helps me make the most sense of his book so it really does matter like uh, for example uh the uh, win you're listening to dune and it's like scott brick and a bunch of other people and simon vance when it mm -hmm. just becomes simon vance i actually think it gets better when all the other characters cut out and it's just simon vance for the rest of the for the rest of the book i think it's even better yeah and and scott has a uh, a video listing his favorite uh, audiobook narrators. It's a great video, and he's one of those people that do so much audio that if you're looking to find good narrators uh, or or to get into audio, maybe with really really good performers and like see how that transition can be made easier, he has great videos for that. Yeah, uh, I'm with you here, Sweet Sour. It's because here's me with the adaptation. My whole life reading The Hobbit, I called the dragon Smog, and then the movie comes out and they're like Smog, and I'm like. Fuck you! I'm not changing it. I'm calling him smog. I I can't change it now. It's too late. It's too late. So yeah, I get that for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Audio. Uh, I think that, that uh, Scott will talk your ear off about some audiobook narrators. That, uh, you know, yeah. Scott's a great guy. So I put up with it, and I, I think Simon Vance is the one that Madison said was elite. So I guess he's pretty good. <laughs> See pretty good since you said that he he takes over and you thought that the book got better. Well, the problem with your Discord, Mike, uh, is and I'm red I'm registering this complaint right now is that I'm the only one who likes Roy Dotrice. Everyone else thinks I'm crazy. I'm a lunatic. I'm the crazy guy that comes down from the mountainside and you know <laughs> gets burned at the stake. And um, I love Roy Dotrice. He's Grampy Grampy Dotrice. He reads me to bed every night and. <laughs> Um, no one else likes him. So yeah. there's a comment for you. Uh, here's the, here's, I have a funny thing about this is right before dancer dragons came out, this was before audiobooks were like common. It was still pretty much on tape and they were just starting to make the way on the digital on your iPod. That's how long ago guys, that's how long ago it was. The dance dragons came out. We were still using our iPods, you know, anyhow. So I said, Hey, I want to do a reread before dance dragons comes out. I'll try this audiobook. I've got the first one on CD. But I'm sure I ripped that and put it onto my uh, yeah, CD. This is great. It's weird. It really wasn't that long ago, you know, here. But I put it onto my iPod and I was listening to it. And, dude, I fell asleep like six damn times listening to that guy. So I, I make the joke constantly about how uh, he ruined audiobooks for me. It's not true. That was kind of when I realized I just I can't I can't focus on these. But, uh, yeah, I mean, hey, don't let anyone tell you what to like. If you like your grandpa reading you a bedtime story, hey. You like Mike that. Roy Dotrice is a fine, fine actor. And when he reads Song of Ice and Fire, I feel as if I'm sitting in a tavern in Westeros and I've got a nice frothy mug of ale. And Roy Dotrice's um, gravelly, um, rough, gruff voice uh, is reminiscent of the gritty, grim, dark feel of the books themselves. And so, screw you guys. I don't know. I might be remembering wrong, but I said one of my big problems with it was that every voice he's, he had sounded like a pirate or a leprechaun. Every yeah. single so voice. I, I distinctly remember a video where Alan lost it and was and was complaining about... A, a uh, video? A, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Alan complaining in a video? He yeah. was talking about Tyrion and this person's performance of Tyrion and how it was horrific. <laughs> and I was, he was like, "Wait for to tell me about it. someone stealing his lucky charms." I'm like, "Jesus Christ, he sounds like the leprechaun. What is oh, this?" Listen, so guys, yeah. for some reason you can't see his charms. Yes, <laughs> let me screw up most of the characters' lucky names. Charms? Yes. Oh yeah, does and he, he doesn't yeah. pronounce stuff right. He yeah. says Jeffrey instead of Joffrey, and he just does it. He just switches it. He interchanges it whenever he feels like it. He Jafari. reads Arya like an 80 year old man with uh, <laughs> with smoker's lungs. Yes. But that's what we love about Roy. Okay. Well, um, 
Oh, that ain't nothing. My wife still calls her Brittany. Oh my god. <laughs> so I, I've heard that a lot. I, yeah, I it's Brian. He says Brian. Right. I hear the most complaints about the Wheel of Time one, and that uh, they change the names like a dozen times reading that. Like basically every time they read it, they just say something new, and like fuck it, we're not going back and re-recording that. <laughs> you know, we'll just leave it in. You know, so uh, yeah, yeah, dang. Uh, this is a better one for you guys first. If you guys could interview one author on your channel, who would it be? And I wouldn't oh, say wow. Stephen King, uh, a kid Joe. I, I, that's the one that I'd be like, I don't, I, I would be, be Chris Farley on SNL with Paul McCartney being like, hey, remember that time you wrote like The Stand? It was cool. You know, I wouldn't know what to say. <laughs> what about you Living guys? Who would you like to interview? Living. Living. I'd interview Brandon Sanderson, so I got some subs, man. <laughs> <laughs> the direct approach i like that yeah yeah i don't know that's a good question man i almost said blake crouch and then i was like well we got that one uh for so. me I, it, it had to be pierce brown i just think i talked to him at that book signing and i think he was just so awesome and that was really before my channel was i i think i had like 200 subscribers and when i went to that signing you wow. know i didn't think that this was this was just like a thing that i was going to do once in a while i was still podcasting a lot so I, I think now did really because just in a brief ten minutes we had like this awesome conversation. I think in a full you know hour or so, it'd be you a guys great just conversation, clicked, right? But yeah. but yeah, but he just he just I think he's just one of those type of people he can just talk to anybody with no yeah. problem. Yeah. Like I yeah. can, and I, I think he just kind of like bailed on social media because we use he used to respond on to everybody on Twitter and stuff all the time. That or maybe he just got too you know he got too famous. Well, he's probably he's working on Red God right now, which yeah. I would. I know he's a type when he's writing, he does not social, yeah. you know, which is so, smart. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think for me, it would be Steven Erickson. Uh, he's quite open to it. I he, know he loves to talk to <laughs> it's more me he getting out. to the point where I'm not like, Ugh. yeah, because yeah. <laughs> I think like I don't get starstruck too often. And I think one of the things that like I'd really have to sit down and, and really think about here's the questions that I really want to ask and the topics I want to explore because he's an author whose books have had such a profound impact on me as a person that like that, that would be harder for me to, to get over the, it's not starstruck necessarily, but um, just wanting to make sure that I made the most of the interview and the, yeah. you know, the questions I'm asking. Yeah, I'm always nervous right before I talk to one because mm -hmm. not because of talking to it, that doesn't really bother me. Me is more like what if they're the type that give like one or two word answers and it's just going to feel really awkward. <laughs> you you got to keep it going, right? Yeah. 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 No, yeah. they haven't had none of them had any problems talking to me yet. Yeah. And Butcher was a fun interview. That, that, that yeah. Funny thing Butcher, about that is I Butcher tell everybody and Jay about Christoph. This. Those are my favorite. Oh, Jay Christoph was my favorite. Those were fantastic. That yeah. was my favorite because it really yeah. felt like we were going to kill like a 24 pack of beer yeah. and talk about anything. <laughs> That's the guy that I so think that you could definitely just kill some booze and smoke some cigarettes or cigars or something with and just talk Cigarillos. about anything. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. He'd definitely yeah. be the cigarillo type. But yeah. yeah, he definitely seems like the kind of guy you could just hang out and just shoot the totally. shit with. with, with You've no interviewed doubt. some amazing people, Mike. Oh, it's yeah. crazy. I was telling my wife the other day i was like wow you know in emails or or something i think i talked to four major published authors just today and i was like wow i would have never expected that when i and it never gets old it's never one of those things where i'm like oh I'm like 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 above that it's still surreal to me yeah like when fonda lee saw the most recent video that i made about i, I had her book oh one of my books on we were in 2023 so she made sure that her publicist got in touch with me to, to make sure that i got one you know, that's, that's amazing to me. Yeah. You know, it's like, that just, yeah. you just don't think that authors watch YouTube, you know, I don't know. I don't know why I don't think that They're, who doesn't watch YouTube. You Twitter has been kind of fun with that too, because I found that a lot of authors are really open, especially, I mean, especially in the Indian self pub world, but mm -hmm. like I've chatted with Anthony Ryan who wrote like blood song and that kind of stuff. And he's a nice guy. And it's just fun to like, get a chance to actually talk to them. And like, they're just humans like us, <laughs> you know, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, like uh, like I said, the I love Nightwish, and the founder of that band's been emailing back and forth with me for like the last. That was week. such That's a cool so video, cool. and then to yeah. see what happens it's after so that, amazing. that was really it, cool. Yeah. And he was saying like he didn't even know I was a fan when he sent me that letter, so it was like a super small world. But we've been even emailing back and forth the last week. It's, it's we're gonna it's, have to have a chat about Nightwish at some time, Mike. Do you like them? I do. Oh yes, they're so Big good. Fan. They're so, so good, so good, so good. Uh, hi, Austin. Uh, you know you are just in time, Rachel. I saw you say something hey. about. Uh, Jay Chris, I remember particularly Rachel, what you said about that is you didn't like the the one part in the interview where I said if you could give your 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 past self some advice, what would it be? And he said, uh, "Stay away from blondes." I remember she didn't like that part. <laughs> I always remember that. It made me laugh so hard. 
Uh, Rocky has a great interview. He'll talk to you. Uh, uh, he however seems like long a you want. In fact, uh, I think I was on one time with him and Jordan on his channel, and they went down a rabbit hole talking about. Philosophy. I was just going to say. Like, He's I'm just gonna go up here and play where... some solitaire or something because <laughs> I've got nothing to add to this. Guy. I remember <laughs> that you drank like three beers during that interview, and I was just like, you know, I think we're boring, Mike. And I don't, I don't drink beer. What are you talking about? I feel this was a while ago. Yes, huh? <laughs> yes, I might have been huh? having one of my things. I... Go watch it. Go watch the video. <laughs> mm. Hmm, okay, I don't really remember that. Yeah, but uh, he's he's a great he's a great interview, and that's definitely so. At this point, I think you call us like personal friends because we text back and forth about anything. You know, not even just talking about the books and stuff. At first, he's like, "Hey, text me anything you want to know while you're reading Kings," because I got Kingdoms of Death so early. He's like, hey, "Text me anything you want to know, anything you're confused about or whatever." And now we just text about just anything. Like, fuck, what is Disney doing to Star Wars now or something? No, we just, you know, Christopher, he uh. I joke he's a great author, but he's a horrible TV watcher because he hates everything. Like, have you ever liked a TV show? You know, so it's pretty funny. Yes, he does. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you guys go see Avatar yet? Are you going to see Avatar? Do you want to see Avatar? I will at some point. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, my kid yeah. wanted to see it because he liked the first one. And I was like, hey, sure. Yeah, we can go. And that's like three hours and 15 minutes. It's like, no, we can wait. We can wait. <laughs> and three hours and 15 minutes. So I was like, I, the youngest forget about it. I can't keep him still for an hour. But I was like three hours and 15 minutes for anybody with kids. That's just. Yeah. No. I, I keep no. wanting to watch the first one with my wife and she, she never is quite in the mood for that. She's like, ah, you know what? It's long or, you know, she doesn't just not interested. Mm -hmm. I don't think she's ever seen it, but I know she can tell that she won't like it. And so she won't let me put it on. I don't want to watch it by myself either. And like, when am I going to find the time by myself to watch like a three hour movie? Um, so I, I, I want to watch the first one again before mm -hmm. I make that decision. So I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't see anybody talking about it right now. Like a lot of people that were like dragging it, like, oh, I can't believe they're making a sequel to this. And then they went to like, it's actually pretty fucking good. And I was like, yeah. I, was like I just never it's doubt James Cameron. Yeah. Hey, if you could interview any author throughout time, <clears throat> who would you interview? Easy for me, Frank Herbert. Frank Herbert, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. And I'd have like my third eye, like opened on screen. It'd be amazing. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing Dickens for you, right? Right, Jordan? Uh, um, I think I would, I would interview Friedrich Nietzsche. He's a 19th century philosopher, um, controversial philosopher, really a uh, deep thinker, amazing pro stylist. Um, and I just think he would have, actually, there's a book about this by the, uh, the psychotherapist Irving Yalom. It's called when Nietzsche wept. And it's about this guy, uh, who lived during Nietzsche's time and was getting psychotherapy or it was, no, it was about Nietzsche getting psychotherapy. Um, but, uh, yeah, I would interview Nietzsche. And if I could, I didn't answer the other one. If I could interview a modern writer, it would be, uh, Richard Russo. Do you guys know who Richard Russo is? Mm -hmm. He wrote, um, he wrote a book called empire falls, uh, and it won a Pulitzer prize. Uh, basically Russo is, He's well known for writing about the lives of these small town, ordinary blue collar folks who usually live in some forgotten, left behind Rust Belt town in New York or like Maine or Ohio. And his books are all about these people's lives and their hopes and their dreams. And he's a he's an amazing uh, writer. Um, he writes with so much depth and his plots are really complex. And he's a big fan of Dickens. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, and he's funny, too. He's fun. He's a retired college professor, and I love his books. So, hmm. I would have guessed you would have said Ayn Rand. I would have guessed <laughs> that would have been fun because I think the, I think that'd been an interesting conversation. No, you I like her books, but I, I I actually think that she it would be too intense for me just as a yeah. person. Like mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen some of her interviews from like the fifties and sixties, but you know she'd be interviewed by like Mike Wallace, and she'd just be like this, you know, and just like. <laughs> You'd, you'd say like Mike Wallace would be like, you know, do you think maybe like it's possible that you don't know everything? And she'd be like, no, I know everything <laughs> because I came from the Soviet Union. I love Ayn Rand. So I'm I'm making fun of her, but um, I don't think I'd want to interview her because mm. I feel like I I would leave with my tail between my legs. Can I ask you a, a, a Nietzsche, Nietzsche question? Nietzsche, yeah. <laughs> my whole yeah, life, I've, I've, my whole life, I have said Nietzsche. It's and it just came like, out of nowhere recently. Nietzsche. You've been saying Nietzsche, so I was like, "If I've been saying it wrong the whole time, 
Yeah, it's Nietzsche. Uh, you probably got that from uh, Goodwill Hunting, and he says Nietzsche, Nietzsche, Nietzsche. But yeah, Nietzsche, um, Nietzsche actually got syphilis from going to a brothel one time. Ah. We we historians believe he had sex once in his life, and it was <laughs> he went to a brothel. He got syphilis, and back then this was the age of benevolent deception. So when you got a, a life threatening, if you had like syphilis or cancer, they wouldn't tell you about it. And um, th because they thought it was better psychologically if you didn't know. So uh, he eventually in uh, in uh, 1889, his syphilis reached the tertiary stage and he entered a syphilitic coma until 1900 when he died. Um, he and he went totally mad. And some of the last books that he wrote were like about his bowel movements and like he went Whoa. totally crazy. And it's really difficult to tell. And he was a genius, so it's difficult wow. to tell like what's sane in his writings and what isn't in the last years of of his of his life. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's wow, interesting. I had no idea. So uh, you know what? That's like smog. I'm it's too late. I, mean, I can't change it. It's Nietzsche. <laughs> yeah, Writing a book about your bowel movements, huh? That's something. All right. How about yep. that? Hey, you guys got a favorite movie of the year? Anything you've seen? I mean, I know we're more readers, and we a lot of us will always say, I don't have time to watch movies, but yeah. you seen any I, new movies this year? I don't have time to watch a lot of movies, but there's one that I went to the theater for, and it shocked me at like how much I enjoyed it. And I just think it's one of the best sequels ever, ever. And that was Top I think Gun. We got the same one. It was, yeah, Top Gun. It was Top Gun. Unreal. Yeah, it was unreal. so good, man. I can't I believe how good that movie it. was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. And I'm not one for those types of movies anyway. So I watched the first one. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like, this is kind of an you know, 80s jam. That's the thing. It's like, I was never, I mean, look, I love me some 80s movies, but I was like, yeah. Top Gun was never, that wouldn't even be a top 100 you know movie. What? From the 80s. I'm not a huge fan of Tom Cruise either. So I was like, you know, like, I, I don't mind him, but I'm not like a Tom Cruise, like, oh, he's in the theaters. I got to go watch him. <laughs> This movie was incredibly well done. Yeah. And I teared up. A, I almost teared up a couple of times. I was like, wow. Yeah. It's so, really good. Yeah. It was a good really time. good. Yeah. Do you guys see anything different? I think everything everywhere all at once would be another one that I really, really like this year. And the Northman, obviously. I haven't but watched I, the Northman. I want to see that one too. Yeah. yeah but I, don't, I don't watch a ton. Uh, I, I'm, I'm over. I'm over anything by Disney. Uh, I have no interest in anything by Disney that everybody I'm, my comedy, you got to watch Andor. I'm not fucking watching Andor. Okay. <laughs> got that out of my system. I just, I've got that point where it's just like, dude, I'm so sick of the Disney machine and you guys being like, oh, God, I'm a slave. I've got to watch everything they put out. I'm like, no, you don't. You really don't, guys. You can, you can, you can, you can move on. But there's, there's some really good movies, I think, this year that uh, a lot of people haven't really given a chance. And everything all everywhere all at once was very, very original. I like that one a lot. But, I've been a Michelle Yeoh fan for, for years, ever since Crouching Tiger, I think. Um, so that's why I watched that one. Yeah. I really want to see The Northman. I actually walked out of everything everywhere all at once. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, wow. it's definitely one of those I think. I'm a, it's just, be like, yeah, I was just not. I think we got about 30, 40 minutes in, and I was like, I just, I'm done. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> like, And I'm a huge Michelle Yeoh fan. I absolutely love her because Crouching Tiger is just a yeah, masterpiece yeah. of a movie. Um so I was, yeah, definitely wasn't what I was expecting, which I think is one of the reasons people either love it or hate it. Um, but yeah, I haven't really seen any of the like new release movies. I saw Saving Private Ryan for the first time this year. And that was like, a, I was like, wow. wow. That's amazing. Yeah. So yeah, that's probably one of the better movies I've yeah, seen yeah. this year. I also, I'm responding to Jesse here. I also watched Barbarian, and I thought that was incredible. That was a very the one on Netflix? perfect one. was yes. so messed up. Oh, my God. Very unique, too, so and up. it was, I watched it right around Halloween. It was perfect for when it, what I wanted. I always say that, like, once you get past a certain age, movies can't really scare you anymore. I was kind of looking down at a couple of points in that movie when you were down there in the dark. Oh, yeah. I was like, we I were really like, are, like this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that was, that was very well yeah. done. Very, very well done. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. All right, I saw something else up here I wanted to read, and I forgot what it was. Did Arcane come out this year? It came was out that last year? Last year. year. Okay. I was all excited for a second. I was like, I have one. Nope. <laughs> I had a uh, okay, that's. I was wondering if you're talking about the, I think Barbarian on Netflix is a German TV show. Oh. I've been kind of eyeing that one, too. I guess not. I can't find the question I had up there. 
dude halloween ends was so so freaking bad i, I skipped like, that one and i'm sort of glad i did dude it was, it was like, yeah. so bad it was like i would watch the last jedi again before i watched halloween ends again it was, that <laughs> bad. It was so so bad oh, i could not believe how bad that movie was best horror book you read this year you guys reading or theo's reading it so, I'm, I mean, yeah that's gonna be the best for, for sure him. um uh, the troop for me I think yeah the troop, the troop really shocked good. me it was yeah. way better than i thought it was and way more reminiscent of king than i thought it would be too in a good mm -hmm. way yeah yeah very yeah. very young young king for yeah. sure do you read any horror this year anything y'all guys no no i don't think so hmm. this you like this horror books at all no not not, not my genre i'm i have never read a stephen king book i know i'm so sorry mike <laughs> okay. i mean it's better than, um, than, than it's more than jordan today tell me like he's not liked any stephen <laughs> king books he's read yet so it's, it's not yeah. a big deal yeah but, i mean i read I a read... lot of books that kind of have horror yeah. elements in them yeah. i feel like but what one yeah. that i read around spooky season but i knew that wasn't horror horror was frankenstein and that was yeah. I did that my my spooky season a couple years ago. Everyone, this is a sci-fi book. It's not horror. I'm like, I think yeah, everyone what, just thinks yeah. about Frankenstein and Dracula's movie monsters, you know. So that, yeah. that's why I did it then. But yeah, yeah. I read a good uh, horror short story by Neil Gaiman. Is it Gaiman or Gaiman, Gaiman? guys? I think Gaiman. Gaiman. From now uh, on, it's called Gaiman, um, though because that what's that? Yeah, Gaiman sounds way more. That fun. sounds way more. Yeah. <laughs> Gaiman. That sounds like when your 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 name sounded kind of funny. You didn't want people calling you gay man, so you went like Gaiman. You know. So yeah, yeah that like yeah. I always thought it was Gaiman, but uh, anyways, I read a story of his called The Price, and it's about this writer, very much like Neil Gaiman, uh, who he takes in stray cats, and it turns oh, out. Yeah. Have you read this? No, my husband did recently and was like, this is really freaking weird. <laughs> it's an amazing story. And basically they take in stray cats and they take in this one really weird looking black cat and it's all bruised up and it's all cut up and nicked up and it's clearly been in a fight or something like that. So they, so the guy brings the cat down uh, into the basement and heals it. And then the cat goes back outside again and uh, at, well, while the cat's in the basement, everything goes horrible for the family. There's so much bad luck. People are getting fired. Um, one kid gets into an accident. The other kid loses his best friend. The guy loses a, a writing gig. And so the cat is healed and he, he, set, he lets the cat go back outside. And it turns out, and I'm not giving much away because there's more to the story. It turns out that while the cat is outside, the cat is protecting this guy's family from the devil. And every time the cat gets beat, beaten up, he brings the cat back in to heal it, and the devil attacks the house again. Anyways, it's it's really good. Wow, wow. That sounds unique yeah. Yeah. and original. <laughs> I'll give it that. I like cats. Uh, any books that interfered with your sleep? I have an answer, Miss Ned. When I finished Dark Tower, I was so freaking upset <laughs> that I was like losing sleep over to the point where my wife was like, "Are you okay?" Yeah. <laughs> you know? So uh, yeah, it's uh, that that one with me for sure. As far as like, if you mean like scary, nah, I don't think so. I don't think I've ever had one of them scary like that. But as far as just like it pissed me off, yeah, Dark Tower did. I I had one that was keeping me up for the for the simple reason that I would have to read a passage and then watch a video explaining it, and then I would go through this <laughs> rabbit hole of like, what does this mean? And like, how did that was Blood Blood Meridian by Cormac McCarthy? I was like, holy oh, shit! God. So I was like up trying to like understand. And enjoy this book. Yeah, I, I lost um, sleep trying to understand why people like that book, but you know. Yeah, so for <laughs> different reasons, right? Like it, that one kept me up for sure. Hellmouth. Yeah, was Hellmouth amazing. was really good for a novella. That was yeah. excellent, and I think that honestly, that took a little bit of the steam out of Between Two Fires for me, mm. because I thought Hellmouth was brilliant, and I just wanted more of that, and I wanted Between Two Fires to be that, and Between Two Fires yeah. was not that, and I think that actually affected it, which isn't fair. Which isn't fair to that author, you know, but it, I, I do think that, that that sounds like, oh, oh, look who's here. Hey, Alan. Hey. I hope you're feeling good, my man. I hope we don't make you laugh too hard. I don't want to make your ribs hurt or anything, yeah. you know, so. But uh, awesome to see that you're, uh, you're you're up and about, my friend. Yeah, Cormac McCarthy, The Road, amazing. Cormac McCarthy, Blood Meridian, I don't get yeah. it. I tried, I was hoping to get to the road, uh, in that spooky season, uh, whatever, but, I, but I couldn't, and it was it's short enough where I can fit it in at some point. So mm -hmm. the road is high on my priority list and definitely That's an the intense next one. Book. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. There's one for you, Jordan. Have you read the two new Court McCarthy books, uh, the passenger and Stella Maurice? 
I haven't. I'm waiting till I have some, you know, some time to like read it in a clear headed fashion. Uh, my job is pretty high octane. So I want to like read it when I'm, when I'm ready. I have read all the pretty horses. That's one of my favorite books that won a national book award. I've read uh, no country for old men, blood Meridian, the road. Um, so I love, love Cormac McCarthy. I think he is maybe the greatest living writer. Um, uh, but uh, I haven't read his two new ones, but um I have kind of a, um, I have a pal at work who loves Cormac McCarthy and thinks he's a god, and um, we have plans to read it in the coming year. So, uh, thanks for the question. So, if you didn't like Blood Meridian, but you really like The Road, what do you? Which one do you think I should try next? All the Pretty Horses. Okay. Right. It's a, uh, it's, it's, it's very mu much a, um, it's that theme of kind of one final uh, Western journey. It's kind of. Um, it's this guy, John Grady Cole, his, his parents' farm uh, is drying up and he and his buddy go out uh, down into Mexico and have a gunslinging adventure with their horses. There's romance, there's prison, there's uh, chases and gunfights. And it's just classic uh, Cormac McCarthy. And, and McCarthy has such a vivid and uh, expansive uh, vocabulary for describing the natural world too. Mm -hmm. And of course it, you got to love his terse, manly, Faulknerian prose. And so I just love Cormac McCarthy. And I think you should read all the pretty horses, Mike. All right. Uh, if it gets me to use words like Faulknerian in a regular sentence, <laughs> uh, maybe I should read more. So does he use punctuation in that one? Or is he just, you know, screw that again? No, he doesn't like, like commas. Flex. He thinks they make the pages look ugly. I feel like it's a flex. He's like, I can get away with not, you know, not doing this. And he doesn't people, need them. People will say I'm a genius, you know? So it's yeah. like, if I, I write a text message, that doesn't have punctuation. People are like, you're a moron. But, you know, Courtney McCarthy, major published author, does it. Everybody's like, oh, he's brilliant. He's amazing. <laughs> amazing. So it's really, really weird. No, Blood Meridian to me. I, I gave my reasons. I just <clears throat> cartoonishly evil people for, it's just like, I don't know. It was. Don't I'm give glad up you guys on like it. I'm glad that's you guys a, like that's it. a notoriously challenging and difficult book. Yeah. And I think. I'll say this about Cormac McCarthy. Uh, the late great literary critic Harold Bloom said that what that what he thought made an author great was what he called idiosyncratic strangeness, by which he meant if you pick up a book, and I know you'll identify with this, Mike, if you read like two lines, you know exactly who the author is. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. No context. Let's say you don't even know. There's no, uh, no one name dropped or anything like that you know exactly who the author is because the style that they write in is so distinctive and so uniquely them. Um, mm -hmm. He says it's a, it's a mode of style that, um, that so assimilates us that we cease to see it as strange. Right. So if you, if you encountered someone writing like Cormac McCarthy in an MFA program in graduate school, you'd be like, who the hell is this? But he's Cormac McCarthy. And so he can get away with it anyways. Right. So yeah, so if I read two sentences and there are no commas or periods, I know, oh, oh, this is Court McCarthy. Yeah, you're yeah. right. And Mike, to your, to your point, I don't know if I liked it. It's the only book I have on Goodreads I didn't rate. Like I, oh, I mean, well, like, right, yeah. well, this year, <laughs> I, like, I, I don't know. I understood what made it exceptional. And by exceptional, I don't mean good or bad. I mean, exceptional. And it was, I mean, the guy can write. And it confused the shit out of me. And then it really <laughs> impressed me. And it was a hell of an experience. It was unique. But I don't know if I liked it or not. I didn't dislike my time with it. But it was not not challenging. So, yeah, mm. I don't know. Okay. That one's an odd one. <laughs> yeah. Have you guys I'm glad read I read it, though. I'm glad I read it. Have you guys it. read Lonesome Dove? It's on the list. It's on the Same list. Here. I have not read the book. But I have seen the yeah. uh, TV the show, series. which is... I, I can't speak to how closely it follows the book, obviously, but as a show standalone by itself, it's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. I've heard it, it, it follows a lot, except that the book's a lot more R-rated, you know, obviously. Yeah. The stuff that they couldn't do on network TV. But yeah, that, that miniseries, if you, well, if you have no Lee interest Jones in ever watching or ever reading the book, watch the miniseries. It's I so read it. I thought it was amazing. I just... yeah. Yeah, do it this year. Glowing review this year. I was hoping uh, to fit it in this year so that I could read McMurtry, McCammon, and McCarthy all in the same year for the Max, first time. Max, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's funny when people say they're gonna. That's how I know that people audio because when they say I'm gonna fit that book in when this book is like bam, you know, yeah. it's like wow. Yeah. When you, you see it, you're that? like, uh, yeah, yeah. Like uh, I'm yeah. building my January around Shogun. <laughs> right, right. No, um, uh, yeah. I, I wanted to read Lonesome Dove last year. I said. 
I don't think I can fit it in. And my wife has a first edition hardcover of that. And I'm so mad she won't oh, let wow. me have it. But there's a story behind it. Uh, her now deceased grandfather gave it to her. It's his favorite oh, book. Wow. And so she was kind of bummed that she didn't read it before he passed away. So when I said I was going to read it, she said, well, wait and let me know when you're going to do it. And I'll read with you. So we're planning on reading that probably sometime in the spring or summer. We're, we're taking another cruise next year. And we might actually just be Sweet. reading that. that that's I one might, of the ones we're going without the kids, you know, nice, so maybe we'll actually nice. have some, uh, some reading time. I might uh, join you on that one, Mike, if it's, if it's in the done. middle of the year, kind the of, cruise? Right, not right at the beginning. Not I was going to say on the cruise. Hey, really? <laughs> I'll see you, bro. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I might, I might join for that. I'd that read, read you, I'd sure. read that again with you guys. And yeah. by the way, if you, uh, not everyone has the first edition or whatever, but the paperback is gorgeous. Mm. It's beautiful. Have you seen it? I'm mm -hmm. uh, not sure if the one that I have. I don't think the one that I have is the one that you're kind of All right, I'll be right back. I'm going to show you this. Sure, sure. I don't think that's the one that I have. That's for sure. Where is it? Yeah. I've only there. seen the like giant mass market. Yeah. Uh, I prefer physical books. I always do. But, 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 Kenji, here's one of the things. If I'm traveling, if I'm going to work, or if I'm reading in bed, I prefer my Kindle so much now. Mostly because in bed is because I, I don't, don't have, have to wake one. my wife up. Yeah, yeah, I think I have. Oh, mine doesn't have like stars on it like that, but I think. Oh, mine, nice. I think mine's just a plain cover with like a black and white cowboy or something. Yeah, I got that one that Theo has. Yeah, this is the one that I have, which yeah, is that's nice. The one I got. That's one it's I got. nice, you know, but it's not. Yeah. So I like reading my Kindle in bed because I don't have to have my wife telling me, oh, "Go read in the living room," because I got my lamp on. You know, I can just you know turn the brightness down a little bit and I can read in complete darkness and it doesn't keep her awake. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's when I do most of my reading, honestly. That's why I got an ebook because I started reading more and more at night after my wife went to bed. I'm like, I can't, like, I don't know how to do this. So ebook and I can't read on the phone. So that was done. Wow. So Madison listens to like eight speed and still took her 10 days to do Lonesome Dove. Jeez. Wow. Might take me a whole month to do this book. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's chunky. Yeah. yeah. It's a big boy. And you look in there, that font is, uh, it's, it's, pretty, it's baby, tiny, baby yeah. writing. Yeah. <laughs> so wow. do you guys have anything besides, do you have a Kindle? Does everybody have a Kindle? Or do you guys have no, something different? No, I have a Kobo, and have there Kobo. are reasons why. And I almost made a video about why, and then all these new models started coming out, and I couldn't keep up with the research. Bro, to... e-reader videos, apparently. I think my channel was built off of Kindle I, videos. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I say go for it. I thought it would be interesting, um, the, but the main reason why is I didn't want to be stuck to the Kindle, the Amazon um, proprietary whatever format. So on a Kobo, you can read EPUB, you can read Mobi, you can read Amazon, you can read whatever. But on the Kindle, you can't. And so if somebody wants to send you a copy of uh, an ebook, or if you want to download it from somewhere else or, or whatever, you, you can't do that. Uh, I can't even buy a, like an, a Kindle book and like send it to my Kobo. Like you just, you just can't. So I didn't want to be tied that way. Um, but there, the one thing that I wish I had on my Kobo that the Kindle has is because in, in other ways, my Libra H2O or whatever is very much like the Oasis. It's just the cheaper kind of version of it. And there's sure. a lot of bang for the buck there. But mm -hmm. the one thing is the uh, the immersive reading. I can't do that with Audible and the thing. You just, it's a Kindle thing. And I wish, I wish I had that, but I don't. Mm -hmm. So I Kindle's such a prick about sideloading stuff and they'll crush your cover art all the time every time there's an update yeah. all your cover art disappears and if you're like me and you're ocd about stuff like that it drives you crazy yeah, yeah. that to point where i was researching kobo of making the switch but then yeah. i was like that's ah, i i've got three kindles in the house i don't want to have to redo my entire yeah. library again you all, then you also have kindle unlimited which can be a good resource for a lot of people you don't have that on on kobo but yeah i'm thinking about doing a video on comparing some of those top tier models or whatever because i i'm thinking about getting a kindle just so i have both i've experienced both and so i can take advantage of some of the the amazon deals and also the kindle unlimited stuff so mm -hmm. we'll see yeah hey, hey do you know, know what's up man? the show and yes, I can confirm that uh, Jordan and Tori are quality follows. Subscribe. I got the links down below. Do it. Uh, I, here's the thing, Darth. I'm seeing what you're saying here is I, I have I don't like to DNF books very often, but I will DNF a series. If I get to a point, yeah. I think uh, Scott, Bald Booktuber, actually taught me this. He's like, if you've read three books and you've liked each one less and less, mm. I think Call there's it. a trend line where you got to follow. <laughs> and that's why I was like, you know what? Maybe Demon Cycle isn't going to turn it around because I was very much still in that 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 mode of I started a series I got to finish it now. I think I, I learned with Brent Weeks I was like got no problem walking away from a series now. So 
I won't DNF a book, but I'll DNF a series really, really quick, honestly. I'm really mm-hmm. impressed with people who can who have this philosophy that they'll never DNF books. It makes me respect you. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I feel like th- those are quality people who don't DNF books, but I'm not so quality of a person because I do DNF books. <laughs> I, I'm the opposite. I'm I get so impressed by somebody who can DNF a book like right away like they just oh, know. They're like, oh i quit after 12 pages like 12 pages yeah Jeez, one what chapter that, no. <laughs> 12 pages. that's insane to me i don't know how you can like i give it like 150 conviction. pages i'm yeah. a, again that's a, fair that's fair i'm an yeah, adherent same. of harold bloom's maxim that he who reads must choose life is short yeah and yeah. i don't think that we should be spending any of our precious time on this earth reading bad books and so oh, sure. if i'm 150 pages in and you still haven't hooked me uh I see that as a problem. And unless I've heard in advance that the beginning is a slog and a slow <laughs> setup, and then the payoff's amazing, then I'll work through it just because I respect the people who gave me that information. Yeah, agreed. But otherwise, I'm just not going to waste my time because there's so many good books yeah. and I'm going to die before I've read them all. Yeah, I yeah, definitely don't yeah. judge anybody. I tell them, like you said, no. life's too short to read something you're not enjoying. Do what works for you. I give Andrew a hard time just because, uh, dude. Every every single update, he has like, oh, I DNF four books and I read five. And I was now, like, oh, that's, yeah, that's to his ratio. credit, he does read an awful lot. So, yeah, you know, does. me DNFing a book out he of He reads like a lot four. of self-published stuff. I'm actually yeah. wishing I could do that more. I just, I yeah. have so much backlog yeah. that I want to get to where I feel like if I start that whole new second genre, basically, of reading like self-published books, man, I'm, for, God, I would never, yeah. ever read I'm going to be fitting in the Everything. odd, the odd one here and there, and there's a few I have my eye on for sure. But one thing I will say is, I think like being someone who reads a lot of Indian self pub and being an indie writer now, I don't think that it's a separate genre. I think yeah, like, right. and I will say like, so I started in self publishing when I was very young, and so mm-hmm. I have seen it become something completely different now than it was 10, 15 years ago, and. Man, the, the stuff that these self-published and indie authors are putting out is just yeah, honestly yeah. can run with any anything in trad pub, in my yeah. opinion. And I think it's it's funny because we're really trying to push the trad and indie at, like we're all just fantasy writers. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I'm guilty of that so. same preconception. It's though, hard. Yeah, it's a totally different pool of books. Right. right. There's fantasy mm-hmm. here. There's fantasy there. But. And, yeah. and that really shouldn't be the case because y- yeah. you're right. Uh, quality's quality kind of doesn't matter mm-hmm. where. So yeah, I, yeah, I, think, I think it's like, I think once I, within the next couple of years, I'm probably going to get through a lot of these heavy series that I've always wanted yeah. to read and I'll have more opportunity to do stuff like that. Right now, I just like, well, you know where to find some booktubers who can find yeah, you. No, no, yeah, yeah, absolutely. To start with. absolutely. Yeah. Talk to Andrew. Absolutely. Andrew is the best at like knowing if this is what you like, read this book. And he's yeah. so good at that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do some of my uh, my self publish releases, and people will actually like message me like, "Hey, can you send me this one, this one, this one?" Yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna read it. I mean, because I, I really just want to help people out. Yeah, yeah. You know? and which you know he'll awesome. he'll he'll uh, he'll get it out there for sure too, yeah. which is what you want. Yeah. See, yeah. so uh, Alan agrees. Andrew does DNF everything. He does. Uh, and Ashley on on my Discord, she's very very. She's the one I was actually referencing, Mark, uh, when she said that she read like ten pages of Children of Time and DNF it, and I was like. 10 pages what could he have possibly yeah. said in that time to make you quit that book you know so i've done I, I that know. a couple of times but mostly i'm i'm kind of like jordan where i'll give something a good 120 150 yeah. pages there are certain things that booktube booktube has actually helped me with like kind of narrowing in on what i really like to read mm-hmm. and so there are certain tropes elements etc that i just don't jive with that much and that will lead me to DNF if I'm just like, nope, I just don't. Mm-hmm. This isn't my isn't my vibe. Man, Brent. Yeah, the Kings of Ash really kind of let me down. Uh, it bums me out because Richard's an awesome guy. Uh, again, someone I'd kind of consider it's a friend at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. He's, and he's got he, and he's got an eye patch, so that makes him metal as fuck, you know? So, yeah, yeah. But I, it just, I don't know, man. That book really, really let me down. And it hurts. I'm, I'm it sad hurts. to hear that because I, I have the first one and I keep meaning to, to pick it too. up. And so that that uh, that hurts a bit. But Well, that's the thing is I'm telling everybody, it's like, don't listen to me. I seem to be right. the unpopular opinion on this because they're all around book two, man. Yep. People, everyone says book two is better than book one. I'm like, I don't yeah. know. I like book one much, much better. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, it's going to happen sometimes. 
Uh, I'm seeing a lot of exactly and some great points. I don't know exactly what they're referencing, but it's one that you guys we'll know you're it. making yep. great points here. Uh, yeah. So I'm trying to keep up with all these. I don't know how we got here. Just going back to Jordan <laughs> horror cat story here. Cat food might taste disgusting, but if it's all you got. Yeah. yeah right. Uh, hey, I, now Starship Troopers. Now I read that in high school and I loved it. And then I saw the movie. I was like, really good it's nothing like the book but i had, a good I had no idea forever that that was a book and my cousin told me it and i didn't know he could read and he was like dude i watched this movie it was awesome and it's a book and you you know so i was shocked at that i had no idea <laughs> someone said they're gonna dnf doors of stone <laughs> yeah so was the author <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah see funny. madison liked the uh, like that ash and Sand book, uh, kings of ash much, much better than us and you see everyone else that's why i'm telling people when i when i'm saying this i'm like please don't take yeah. my word as gospel on that one because you right. might feel differently it's just i think it was like it was one of those things where i just went into it wanting something else and i think i just i just didn't get that and right. i think yeah. taking a two-year break between books one and two was a bad idea for me it really was i never meant to do that mm -hmm. sometimes it happens it just it just kind of happens that way but um uh, i don't know i don't know yeah so how'd you get into Red Rising, Tori? Was it with, was it through BookTube or did you do that before? Because I mean, um, I'm, I'm looking at your beanie and I'm jealous. I'm jealous. I'm, I yeah, I know, right? Etsy. Uh, um, but I'm trying to remember actually because I think it was was it while I was on BookTube. I honestly do not remember how I found it, um, or even when I read it. <laughs> I'd have to go back and look at my Goodreads. I had about maybe a hundred subscribers when I started reading that one. So it's my first break from uh from Wheel of Time. I was like, I want something just like completely different. A friend of mine was really, really pushing it on me. And he was yeah. reading First Law off my recommendation. So I was like, I tell you what, make a recommendation. He recommended Mistborn. I blew through that. So I said, make another recommendation. He recommended this one. Well, when when did you read Red Rising? Because it is totally it was, possible that I saw your review on it. Because I was around when you, I'm to you had like 2,000 subscribers or something like that. Yeah, I had done it then because uh, I did I did uh, what wheel time and then I did first law and like the first series I covered outside of those two was the first Red Rising book and I was so disappointed with it and I, I felt terrible because my friend was like man I felt like I really sold you a series I thought you would love <laughs> and then like after a while I started thinking about it I was like you know what I think the arrow was pointing up on it though so I was like I'll, I'll start I think I just went into it I wanted like Ender's Game or something and I yeah. got you know like I said Hunger Games on Mars is how I felt about it. And I kept thinking about it. And I was like, okay, well, I'm interested enough to see if some things change. And then like basically the first chapter of book two, I was like, holy shit. You know, yep. and then it was like the arrow was just went just launched to the moon after that, man. I, I couldn't get enough of it. So. It's one of my favorite like series slash trilogy conclusions ever. I yeah. think Morningstar is brilliant. And I actually, I'm kind of, I know a lot of people love the series, but Red Rising is their least favorite. I actually love the first book because hmm. um, it's like, honestly, all of the things I love to read. <laughs> so it was, it was one of those things where I was just excited when it kept getting, you know, better and better throughout the series. Um, but yeah, it's, I'm hoping to do some videos on my channel about Red Rising pretty soon here. Cause I, I Severo want... is one of my favorite fantasy characters of oh, all yeah. time. Severo is the best. Uh, Red Rising first era, second era, better. most people are going to say first without a doubt. Here's the thing for me, you know, if he if he sticks landing on books three and four, yep. uh, it might be the second one for me because I think the second the second series is way more grim dark. It's like yeah. if you're a Joe Abercrombie fan, I think you'll like the second series much much more. So if he sticks the landing, it might be that for me because uh, I loved Iron Gold. I know a lot of people didn't like that one. I loved. I haven't it started second era yet. You have you have these ideas of the way the first trilogy ends, yeah. and then with the second one, so you kind of see like, huh. Uh, reestablishing a society isn't as, quite as easy as our characters thought it was going to be. And you see that, you know, hey, they're kind of falling into some of the same traps of the people that they tried to uh, fight in the first series. So I think yeah. it gets a lot of good themes like that, but it's just so brutally dark. It's yeah. so bad. And I love it. I love it. He's just <laughs> killing babies and shit. It's great. It's just fantastic stuff. So if you're, you know, sensitive to things like that, you know, it might uh, not Mike, be let, t tell me this. Do you think, given what you you know of my reading taste, knowing that I like Christopher Rocchio, and that I you mentioned Hunger Games earlier, I even can appreciate in a kind of guilty pleasure beach reading way something like Hunger Games or Divergent, just as a kind of airport book or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, and then knowing I like Christopher Rocchio, and I do like to read about ancient Greece and Rome. Do you think I would like Red Rising? I hear I everyone always you... talking about it. I think you might find it a little simplistic. I think you would probably think it's, uh, it has potential because what I've said, 
about uh, about Sun Eater when I got into it. As I said, I would describe it. And I think Pierce Brown's a great writer. I don't mean this as an insult. I said, but I was like, imagine Red Rising, but it's written by Patrick Rothfuss. That's how I describe mm-hmm. Sun Eater. Mm-hmm. Because he's such more of a serious writer where Pierce Brown is very much. Uh, he's been watching Star Wars, you know, and Star Trek and stuff. And he loved Ender's Game. You know, so it was, it, it's, it's more of the the fun turn your brain off. If you're wanting like, Alistair Reynolds and like, you know, Peter F. Hamilton, like just straight hard science. It's not the series for you. It's very much turn your brain off and have some fun, you know, doing something like an iron gold, which I won't tell you what that is, but a lot of people won't understand what that is or an iron rain. And they'll be like, that doesn't make any sense. And they're doing something where they're just like launching through space. And it's not like the expanse where they checked out all the science. It's just star Warsy, you know? I think if you go into it like that, you, you might like it. But I don't know. I think you. I, I don't want to say you think it was too simple, but I, I think you you might say ah, I need something a little more thought provoking than this because it's it's not philosophical. It's just action books. But that's it's one of those series. I would argue with there. you on that, Mike. You what? I would argue with you on that one. Okay. Okay. No. No. Go ahead. What, <laughs> what, what, what do you think? No. Anyway, and this again, this is just such a great example of like two people reading the same series and having completely different experiences okay. with it. Um, I totally agree with Mike that if you go into it, I haven't read Sun Eater, but I know enough about it to know if you go into it expecting another Sun Eater, like don't put your expectations there. Right, right. Um, In my opinion, what I really loved about it, I'm such a character driven reader that the themes of, of like sacrificial love and loyalty in Red Rising is like one of my favorites in any fantasy series. Um, And a lot of the just the the relationships and interactions between characters and the way he does villains, the way he writes women, like all of those things I think are absolutely really well done. And yeah, they're very heavy, like fast paced action books, but they definitely have some really strong themes in there as well. So well, sure. And you know, I wouldn't be reading yeah. if it wasn't a character book and his oh, characters yeah. are great. Yeah. I mean, all of them. I mean, every single character you're yeah. going to give a damn about one way yes. or the other. And yeah. I said, one of my favorite things about that series is it is pretty much like nonstop action, but when he slows down, it has these scenes where it's just two people in a room talking to each other. Yes. Some of my favorite the moments parts. of normalcy. It's so, so good. So good. So, and I think a lot of people get kind of freaked out about his, uh, his action scenes. Cause they're like, I don't really understand what's going on. I think he does it on purpose because when you're in the middle of a battle, shit's going crazy. Yeah, you have crazy. <laughs> literally seconds to think, and you don't know what's going on. I think he does it on purpose and that confuses some people. But I think, like I said, he does it on purpose and I think it makes it really good. It's just chaotic like that. So yeah. uh, what I mean when I say that uh, I, I think you might find it a little too simple is just that it doesn't have hard science. Right. It does not have hard science in it. He's He, he even said in a convention, uh, the signing that I went to, is that he said that, uh, yeah, I, I, I talked to the people at NASA and they said they appreciate that I try. <laughs> <laughs> you know so uh yeah it, it's uh it's it's something i don't think is a, a large commitment for you but I, I i tell people please read the first two books don't yeah. judge it off that first book because i'm going to be doing this reread as i call it here and i know people are going to read that first book and they're like i don't know yeah. what you're on mike you're I hot. actually i stopped reading the first book i i had it on audio because i got it as a deal or whatever now i own I, now i own them and i've been looking for a time to to read them and i stopped listening to the audio of the first one and I think it might have been the narrator for me. I'm not precisely sure, but I just kind mm-hmm. of never continued. I didn't have that that momentum with it, so I put it down. Never quite got back to it. So I'm looking for a reason and a time to read them. The reason I'm cautious about it is just because mm-hmm. uh, whenever I talk about Red Rising Channel, I always get like Alistair Reynolds fan number one, like telling right. me that they're just trash <laughs> sci-fi. Don't even call those books sci-fi. But I get that with Blake Crouch. I get that with uh, Andy yeah. Weir too. Yeah. You know, well, and I, I think Mike's got a good point in that comment too. Like, yeah, I mean, it's not like science fiction. It's, it's, it is very much space fantasy. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not like he doesn't there's write. There's a place for that, I think. That totally. Is, yeah. And he doesn't write like the super dense lyrical, like it's not going to be super lyrical prose or anything like that. Um, but yeah. Yeah. But he's not, he's not what I would call like a schlock writer either. Cause no. he has like a lot, if you're really into like Roman mythology and stuff, man, like yeah. I said, there's sometimes where it's like all of a sudden I feel like I'm reading Odysseus here or something. It's like, yeah. wow, this is deep. Yeah. You know? So he really does that. And he, he plays with a lot of that mythology really, really well. If you're into yeah, that kind of stuff. So yeah, reading Percy Jackson, my kid, I'm thinking about all this Greek mythology. So I'm like, man, I can't wait to get back to red rising next month. It's going to be so good. <laughs> I'm so excited to revisit this series. It's, is it's, that it's, starting it's, January, Mike? Yeah, 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 just oh, one wow. month. And, and look, okay. dude, you They're can do babies. this. I, I you know. can do yeah. this in, 
it's big font too. You could do this. Well, they get bigger, man. They do get. Oh, bigger. they do get bigger. Yes. Now, yeah. Dark Age is monstrous. It's a Brandon yeah. Sanderson sized book. They yeah. do get bigger every single book. But that first trilogy, doing one. Yeah, it's a super like, fast read. Cool. All. Okay. So that's a, maybe that's I'll a fit in. Maybe I'll fit it in. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 uh, and I know that the audio guy is Madison's boyfriend. That is uh, Tim. Tim Reynolds, Reynolds, I think right? it the Irish guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah not yeah. quite like Roy Dotry's Irish guy, but like an actual yeah. Irish guy. Yeah, and I, I joke all the time that he sounds like a, I just do that just to just to, to get on her nerves. I just like you know, messing with her about that. He's apparently quite popular. That he does a lot of books. I think he does this Michael J. Sullivan books. I know he does Brian Lee Durfee's books. So he's yeah. he's quite popular. And apparently, I've heard a lot of people tell me like I didn't I did nothing but audio for Red Rising and loved it. You know so. Okay. There's that. I was gonna say, Mike, that's a book that you put me onto that I'm excited to read next year. Is uh, me Dirt too. Trilogy. I want to read that too next year. Yeah, I can't wait. Yep. That's a priority. Yeah, it, it's yeah. really good. I'm in that third book right now, and I'm taking my time with it just because I, I think it's one of those where that's kind of the downfall of if you wait till a series is complete to read it is if you really love it, you're going to be sad that's over so fast. Yeah. yeah. And I am taking my time with book three because I'm already like, man. I know two things. One, he's going to start killing everybody, <laughs> <laughs> and two, it's going to end. You know, so it, mm-hmm. it, it's 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 really it rough, but it's it's good. It's really good. Yeah. I, I read had, the little opener like chapter for it, um, and I always get excited when a book can grab me in the first chapter really quickly. And yeah, I was like, I'm so ready to read this. I loved the first chapter. Yeah, he, he, it's one of the things is I tell people if you've only watched Brian's channel and you think he's just a big goofball, <laughs> trust me, he doesn't write like that. No. Uh, if you like Gwen, if you like George R. R. Martin, I think that you're gonna you're gonna love what he does in those books because it isn't quite as brutal, I think, as like a song of ice and fire, but I think it's getting there. <laughs> and I think it's gonna get there before the end of this third book. But yeah, it's 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 really, really good. It's really I, I've good. heard I've heard uh Faithful in the Fallen comparisons. Is that I said I feel like if it was Faithful in the if Fallen, darker. But a little more R-rated. Yeah. Okay. A little more. Because okay. John, he's a great writer, but he is pretty PG-13. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. For sure. Uh, and I don't think that Brian doesn't go full Joe Abercrombie. He's not got characters shitting themselves and talking about cock rot and weird <laughs> shit like that, like Joe does. You know, but he does get a little, a little dark. There is some colorful language in there and stuff. And he does have some pretty fucked up disgusting scenes you know with some some maybe some people's insides falling out and stuff he does he will he will show you that stuff a little bit so it's a little more i i feel like maybe if it was faithful in the fallen on like 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 a different path of the beam kind of thing you know okay. I, I think for sure okay so uh, if you like faithful in the fallen i think you'll definitely you'll definitely like it but it is a little darker mm-hmm. yeah see? sounds perfect <laughs> see I, I i knew it i knew brian was gonna get vicious here at the end i knew it i could feel it yeah oh wow yeah, I think uh, Madison and Tori are, are going to be like new besties. Apparently, I'm I, here for I, it. I told Madison before we I got on the uh, on on this thing. I'm like, you just wait. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like she's she's the best. We're yeah. gonna be in each other's DMs like five minutes. One hundred percent. And I called it. Yeah. yeah. So Jordan, it seems like I've got your list going. This I got you on Lonesome Dove next year. I got you kind of the question marks above your head about Red Rising. I'm happy. I'm happy to plan your reading list for you. I mean, I've already done it for Philip. You know, I so. think I might actually do Red Rising because I don't know. Like I, I, I do like to read fun books that are mm. plot that are plot forward and that have good characters and where I don't have to think so much and I I don't have to take notes every five minutes and I can just sit back and kind of enjoy the ride. Especially yeah. after like a long day of work where I've taught like five classes and I just want to get home and yeah. just kind of like plug into this escapism. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. Yeah. You never have to take notes. You never have to. <laughs> True. That's why I quit doing spoiler videos. Uh, Cause a yeah. lot of people are like, Oh, I wish you'd bring back the spoiler things. Like you did for Will of Time. I was like, I'll never do that. It's again. a lot of work. Because, to, to well, yeah, I feel it. like I, all I'm doing is I feel like I'm, I'm it's doing schoolwork or something. <laughs> I, I didn't want to do that. You yeah. Know? Hey, who's excited for the Barbie movie? That's, this is one I had. <laughs> I had <laughs> is, I'm is glad Margot that they're Robbie using Margot there? Robbie, who is beautiful and not using the, I can't remember her name, the actress they originally had, where I was like, yeah. no. She's, uh, yeah. Margot's pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah. I'm a huge Harley Quinn fan, so. Uh, I rewatched Wolf of Wall Street last week. Man, what a great movie. And yeah. she's absolutely. Sure awesome. was. I remember watching that movie, my wife, even my wife, who's usually always like, Arr. she was like, yeah, she's hot. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, see, so everybody thinks you should do. Yeah, right, I right. agree. If that's what you're okay. looking for, Jordan, I think it's a good fit. I'm in. Like I said, just don't go into it expecting Alistair Reynolds. I think, and you'll you'll really appreciate it. He does <laughs> or great Sunny character work. Yeah. yeah, he does yeah. Great, yeah. great character work for sure. Yeah, he does. And the fact is that Brian, uh, Christopher says he won't read it because because he doesn't. Oh want yeah, it. He, he, he already gets people accusing him of taking stuff from him when he's like, "What the fuck? I've never even read it." You know, so <laughs> that's funny. Uh, yes, Jane. I, I didn't even know she was an Aussie, but yes, I think all Aussies that I've met, Aussies Pretty and Canadians cool. have all been really, really cool. So, oh, thank you. you know, I know Canadians get the, the 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 stereotype of being like crushingly nice, but it's been true so far. I mean, Steven Erickson's been super nice. Richard Nell, uh, I think his name's Theo. I can't remember. He's pretty <laughs> nice. He's pretty nice so He's far. Right. So. I'm hoping to keep that up. Yeah, we're doing well so far. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Harley, when she first debuted on Batman the Animated Series, I never thought that she'd be a character was as popular now as she, as she is. But yeah, Harley's a, Harley's a great character. Mm. Me too. Margot <laughs> Robbie can call me too. Yeah. Collect. I would be fine with that. I would accept <laughs> I the character. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, you guys got anything uh, interesting you're doing for the holidays? Or are you just chilling and just staying home? You going anywhere? I mean, we already know Theo's going on vacation. So that's yeah. I wish yeah. I could do that. I'm going to hang out with Mickey Mouse. It's just okay. staycation for me, baby. I can't wait. I, I go to work this week. I think I'm off Thursday, and I don't go back until like the 4th or something. So. You're just oh, wow. hanging around the house, Mike? Get some reading done? Just recharging, get some reading done, recording some uh, some videos. Maybe I'll actually get back to my other, my second channel, you know, because I haven't done anything in there like a month. Yeah. You know, and the thing was, is I, I never should have done that. As I said, when I did it, I didn't want to start until the new year because I knew the holidays were going to be busy. But then I got caught up in all the Halloween stuff. Mm. And I did it. And then I was like, wow, well, man, it's it's idea. there. It's there for when you when you need to yeah. put something else into. Yeah, it that's and, definitely and, one that I'm not worried about algorithm or nothing like that. Yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. it's just it's whatever. Hey, I'm glad. I'm glad you showed up. Uh, or I showed up in your feed rather. Yeah, but <laughs> I'm glad you showed up to this conversation. We're happy to have you. Welcome, Rob. Yeah, My we're favorite. good. I'm probably going to get a bunch of, re hopefully going to get a bunch of uh, reading done. My husband's actually off work the week between Christmas and New Year's. And we usually do that as a tradition to just kind of hermit in the house and be a family and best. read. And yeah, that's the best. Yeah. You yeah. going to Jordan or are you just, just going to relax? Recharge? Yeah, we're doing what we do every year, which is we go to my my parents' house for Christmas Eve. And then we wake up in the morning and do presents um we well we spend christmas eve night stuffing the stockings and putting the presents i'm sorry are there kids watching this you, channel you're doing what sorry <laughs> um, we're waiting for santa spying on santa is what you're doing putting out yeah. the cookies <laughs> and then in the morning we open presents together and we do breakfast and we have a good time and then we go to my wife's so we go to my in-laws and we stay up all night and we open presents at the aunts and uncles and then we go to my wife's uh mom's house and we open presents there and then my brother-in-law likes tough guy films and so we have this tradition now where we stay up late and watch like the tough guy movies he likes like jason statham and things like that i don't usually watch those kind of movies but uh with jonathan we'll stay up drinking bourbon and watching those movies and then we play with our toys the next day and then like tori i go home after that and we just do the hermit thing and i don't have kids yet so we can just kind of like no that sounds awesome yeah. I, it, I was yeah. just gonna say i'm like that's have like an perfect. arnold schwarzenegger like watch-a-thon hell yes man i'd be all over that yeah that sounds yeah. great yeah yeah so you say, i that's why i know i'm older than you jordan because i grew up in the 80s that was a whole genre tough guy film you know, they were great <laughs> yeah i love them yeah, yeah. i love them uh, my favorite episode of batman the anime series i don't think i could pick one I rewatched uh, that whole series with my kids, like when it first came out in Blu-ray a couple years ago, and that show's aged amazingly well. It really, really has. So if you never watched it, it doesn't matter. Do it now. It's it, it's still really great. I haven't watched Wednesday. You guys watch Wednesday? Yep. We started like yeah. a couple episodes. It's interesting. I, I'm into yep. it. I mean, it's your typical angsty like high school show, yeah, figure, but it's figure. better <laughs> because yeah. it's Wednesday Adams. It's interesting yeah. enough. Yeah. Uh, look, uh, people were like, oh, that's kind of creepy. And I was like, why is it creepy? Because I am the same age as Christina Ricci. I had a huge crush on Christina Ricci when Me I was too. younger. Dude, Since Catherine Zeta-Jones is Morticia Adams. Yeah. Like, yeah. what yeah. more yeah. could you want? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So when she basically, when the new uh, Ginny Ortega is her name, when yeah. she basically got uh, Christina Ricci, Ricci's blessing, it was good enough for me. Yeah. It was good enough for me. She's Plus, very I'm good. Like, She's brilliant, Lawrence actually. Burton, yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, it's like... If you combine Daria 
I don't know if you've ever seen yeah, Daria, yeah. Daria Morgendorfer from the Daria from the, uh, the it was like a follow up to Beavis and Butthead, but Butthead. it was focused on the kind of sardonic, cynical, dry humored, intellectual girl Daria with the glasses. Oh yeah, it's kind of like that meets um, like a CW teen angsty show, like Tori said. It's okay, like it, I. I don't think it's memorable, but it was kind of like a fun diversion yeah. for the couple episodes I watched. Hmm. Yeah, and Gwendolyn Christie is in it, so. Roadhouse, that's one you guys should watch for your Macho Movie Athon. I agree with that. Roadhouse? Roadhouse? I've never seen it, Mike. Oh, man, it's so awesomely bad. It's like one of those movies, like even in the 80s, I knew it was awful and I loved it anyway. Yeah. It's got Patrick Swayze and Sam Elliott beating the shit out of people, man. It's so good. It's so awesomely bad. I love me some really awesomely bad movies like Big Trouble in Little China. Terrible movie. I love it so much. Yes, it's so good. It's so bad. I love it so, so much. But yeah. Is Lethal Weapon a Christmas movie? That's a better than the usual diehard argument we get every year. Yeah. I mean, I guess. I guess. Uh, I don't know. It's such a weird, weird topic for me. Because I'm like, if it's a movie that has Christmas in it, is it really a Christmas movie? I, I don't right. really know. For me, I said my rule for a while there is, do they say Merry Christmas in the movie? Then yeah, sure. It's a yeah. Christmas movie. That's why I count Gremlins. Uh, yeah. uh, Die Hard, they do say Merry Christmas in it. I don't know about Lithuweapon. Weapon. I know a lot of people have been trying to put Harry Potter in there now. And I'm like... I saw that. And my wife asked, like, what do you think? It. I'm like, I don't necessarily think so. I mean, I wouldn't not watch it around Christmas, but I wouldn't think of it as a Christmas movie. Right. Ish. Um, Severance was awesome. If you guys haven't watched that, man, I started so it. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. It's so one of good. the best shows out there. Brilliant. Yeah, the masterpiece. No doubt. No doubt. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of people, uh, Harry Potter. Yeah. A lot yeah. of people have that on there. It's so weird. I, don't I know. like I mean, the Home Alone every watch, year. So maybe that's yeah. kind of more the. Like, yeah, right. It's definitely a comfort watch for sure. I mean, I did tell my wife I want one of those uh, one of those Miss Weasley sweaters that's just got like a big M on it, like they always get in those movies. I, I'd love that. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but see, yeah, Harry Potter also has Halloween in it, so it's I don't yeah, know. yeah. Oh, that's a weird one. That's a weird. I love one. the old animated Grinch. Yeah, yeah. we watched that. Uh, we have several we watch every year, but it's tradition that we watch a Christmas story on Christmas Eve. Mm. Oh, know? okay. And it, it, yeah, that we always go because I think it's because for the longest time, TBS used to run it for 24 hours, a Christmas story. So, so it just, just became on, like a thing. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, would, it, would, it would start about like six o'clock on Christmas Eve and run through Christmas, six o'clock Christmas Day. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I always I always do that. That's my favorite Christmas movie. So we always make sure we watch that one. But uh, uh, the kids love Home Alone. That's their favorite. So those are my movies. Watched, yeah. Those, we watched those are Home Alone about 900 movies. times just this year. Yeah. And we just watched the Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special, which was a lot of fun. A lot of fun if you're into that. Uh, I think James Gunn movies are very, very funny. Uh, his humor doesn't land for everybody. It would last mine. Jingled All the Ways, a very underrated Christmas movie, I think. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I love that one. Movie. Yeah, I think it's one of those things that people don't realize. People that are younger and they've only shopped online at Christmas. Is you don't understand people the used chaos. to punch each other in the face. The for shit. I remember at a Toys R Us so one year, crazy. right around when Star Wars Episode One came out, and there was two grown men punching each other in the face for some of these Star Wars toys. And I was like, Jesus Christ! Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I was never, never that person. But yeah, so people will cut yeah. you for some stuff. So that's why I think Jingle All the Way may not land for younger audiences, but for my generation, we were like, yeah, man, that, that was that was real. People would cut yeah. each other for a toy. That's mm -hmm. why White and Christmas. Yeah. Is my favorite. Is my favorite Christmas movie. It's classic. Anyone in here, fan. Yeah, White yeah. The only one I think that is is classic that I don't really resonate with is Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street and Same. It's a Wonderful Life. I know everyone loves those yeah. two movies. I don't think I've ever made it through It's a Wonderful Life in one sitting. I've seen the whole movie, you know, for different parts, but I've never watched the whole thing before. But yeah, Mass and Christmas Vacation is my wife's favorite. That's awesome. It's yeah. amazing. It it, it yeah. never it never really gets old. It's weird because I was like, you think uh, you watch a movie once a year, every year, you're going to get tired of it. But no, not with that one. I don't think so. M Madison, did you see my pictures of my our Halloween party where our friends dressed up as the Griswolds? It was perfect. Classic. They just nailed Scrooge. it. Right? Scrooge is an underrated one, I think. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. We got some We got some love for, for White Christmas in there. What's your favorite Christmas song, Jordan? Um. Let's see. Um. I like that song. We need a little Christmas. Um, I like that. Uh, I saw Mama kissing Santa Claus. 
Um, my seven year old's favorite. The I Jack like, Five version. Um, Santa Baby. Um, so you like Christmas music? It sounds like All right. I do. Um, what else? Um, I don't know. There's a bunch. Yeah. You guys have any favorite Christmas music? Or are you over it? The the one that I always, whenever it's on, I always turn it up. I never turn it off. I guess that it means that I enjoy it is uh, Happy Holidays by uh, NSYNC. That's my jam. I crank that shit up. Nice. NSYNC <laughs> pull on here. All right. Uh, for me, anything trans Barian Orchestra. I think they're just, they're awesome. It sounds like Nightwish doing Christmas music. Who isn't going to love that shit, you know? So I love that. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. So basically anything except that Mariah Carey song, really. And Felice <laughs> Navidad. I live in Texas. I am so sick of Felice yeah, yeah. Navidad. No, 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 no yeah. Felice Navidad for me. Yes, yeah. Jonathan, baby, it's cold outside. A controversial, misunderstood classic. In yeah, my opinion, that one's, that's too bad. That yeah, yeah, that's weird. Thank you. Yeah, I guess Madison had a fan. Like, look, look, my younger days, I worked in retail. I was so sick of Christmas music. I didn't want to hear it anymore. But now it's like, yeah, okay. If you yeah. don't start it until after Thanksgiving, I'm okay with it. But, you know, <laughs> people that start that shit on November one, jump in a fire, please, please. But you know, hey, if it puts you in the holiday spirit, man, I'm I'm good with it. I'm good with it. When I was younger, um, we used to do a candlelight Christmas Eve service at our church, and my mom would stand up in the balcony and sing Oh Holy Night while the church was just lit up with candles. So that is wow. like still to this day one of my favorite songs of all time for Christmas is Oh Holy yeah. Night. It's just a beautiful song. Brent, the entire Elvis Christmas album slaps. I'm just putting it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's my dude right there. Yeah. Uh, I, you guys have like a, a tradition with like wrapping presents because we've started this suicide thing where we do it on Christmas Eve after the kids go to bed. And last year we had this brilliant plan and we were going to not only do that, but we were going to put together an air hockey table that we bought them. It took us I remember four that. hours to put that thing together. Four hours. So was we that the year, year you got sure sick? We off, like, right. What's that? Was that the year you got sick? Might have All been. Christmas day because like you burned the candle yeah, at both so. ends. Yeah, I forgot yeah, I about that, but I think so. Through that. I got like no sleep. Yeah yeah, 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 I think so. Yeah, great times, right? Great times. And it's for your kids, you know? It's like I just proved earlier this year I had the flu and still went to Six Flags with my kids, you know? So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> you, you wow. do crazy things for your kids. So, look, maybe Tori can back me up here. Kids are great. Don't have them. <laughs> <laughs> Because they are a lot of work, you know, and, and and here's my thing is I'm just I'm terrified of ruining a human, you know, <laughs> yeah. that's valid. That is absolutely valid. Yeah, But you yeah. got to remind yourself that everyone's a rookie when they do this, you know, you're yeah. making mistakes. And I look at other people's stuff and I'm like, eh, you're not quite as good of a parent as you act like you are on Facebook, are you? You know, and I don't really, pay any attention to Instagram. We're, if you're all, we're do all terrible at this, you know, and I think it's just everybody puts on that happy face for, for yeah. everyone else, you know, but hey, you know that's yeah. it but yeah i don't recommend putting all of your christmas wrapping stuff after the kids go to bed on christmas eve that's a if lot you have of work man. To- it is a lot of work yeah, so yeah i think if we had to do over again we would just we would just build it and be like oh hey look it came early merry christmas you know <laughs> so, I, man that was that was yeah it's about 3 a.m. I was like, Jesus, what are we going to do? We consider just like throwing a blanket over it and hoping they didn't see it. <laughs> because, but yeah, no, we finished it. Yeah. I think one of the coolest things as like a nerd parent that's been really cool. So my son, my oldest is 10 now. And um, like last year, I think last year or the year before, uh, we watched the Chronicles of Narnia movies with him for the first time. And just seeing him like experiencing things for the first, like, I cannot wait to watch the Lord of the Rings films with him. I cannot wait. And just, just watch his reaction to it. Cause he read the book with my husband this year and loved it. And like, I just can't wait to watch him experience it for the first time. Cause we, you know, can't again, <laughs> which is yeah. hard. And those movies have just been such a hugely impactful thing in my life that I can't yeah. wait to see him like get that. Yeah, I showed my, my, my oldest, I showed him Lord of the Rings probably a little earlier than before, but he <laughs> loves it. I mean, he yeah. loves that universe. I mean, he even likes Rings of Power and I don't get it, but you know, he even likes that. So yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to, I've missed, I'm not going to poison him against anything. I think he, he's right there at that age where he's going to start turning on stuff and realizing that, Hey, this kind of sucks. You know, I think besides the last Jedi, I don't think I've ever watched anything of the big IPs that he didn't love, you know? So mm-hmm. 
enjoy it while I can, you know, before they get real douchey and decide that everything sucks, you know, like, <laughs> like, like we get, like I get when I'm older and I think everything sucks, but yeah, man, you can share any of those movies, with your kids. That's a great, great time. Like when he first started getting into Arnold movies and stuff and I started showing them all fantasy movies. Like we watched clash of the Titans last night because he's just so into Greek mythology right now. And he did ask me, he's like, we were reading Percy Jackson. And he says, Hey, have they made a movie of this? And I was like, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen my wife as mad as when we were watching the first Percy Jackson movie. And she was just so pissed off. She was like, this is just such crap. I was like, I don't think it's that bad because I hadn't read it. And so, yeah, uh, I, I don't I, I don't know. Uh, Matt, by the way, I just want to say I worked in retail. Black Friday is the worst, man. Yeah, it is the worst. It is definitely the worst. The worst people like ain't no one in the Christmas spirits. Everyone's mad that you can't write a check, <laughs> you know, and everybody has a, just mad that you don't have everything in stock. I worked in a game store 20 something years ago and Black Friday was the worst. It was just the worst. So I would not recommend yeah. it. I can you imagine. Know. Yeah. Get a real professional job like Theo, you know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> So anybody got anything else before we go or, you know, you got any plans for the rest of the evening, rest of the weekend, anything you're going to do? Film a bunch of videos. Yeah. yeah. I record a little. Schedule them there. out so I don't have to do it yeah. Christmas week. <laughs> That's right. As I know that next week I'll get busy and I have yeah. promised to do a, a special uh, Game of Thrones review next week. And nice. I, I like to take my time on those because, you know, it's my favorite. So I got to make sure I do that right. So I've recorded all the other like easy videos and got that. I even recorded some for next week. Like I said, to, to to get those out of the way, and hopefully I can just kind of be done, yeah, and just you know be a dad at Christmas time. That's what I want to do, you know. Yeah. Make sure that I'm I'm there for my kids for stuff like that. Same here. That's I'm awesome. I'm planning to make a few videos. Uh, Good. Get, get Good. back into the swing of things with my channel. Um, we're all kind of settled, moved in here. Everything's fixed. Everything's ready to go. So I'm good to like go back cool. to making videos. And I'm gonna do a book uh, shelf tour, a little tour. Nice. Of the new place. And uh, so that'll be cool. I'm still trying to figure out how to do it. I know, Mike, you said you got to go through first and then narrate over it. So I'm going to try yeah. doing that. We'll see how that works. Yeah. You um, can like narrate as you go so that when you edit, you kind of know what you're talking about for how long or whatever. I was gonna, it. but like, I don't have a good mic for that. Yeah. No, you can so still voice over it. But so when you edit it, you'll just mute your yeah, own. Yeah, just cut out that audio and add your own. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, so yeah, you can like, follow along. I was like, when I do that post production, I'm just like, this is what I would have said. Yeah, while I was exactly. doing it kind of thing. Okay. So I kind of think about it. But uh, yeah, I just always, with me, because I podcasted first, if my audio is bad, I'm so pissed off. You know, <laughs> it, it, there's no excuse to have bad audio when I've been, when I podcast a decade before doing this. Yeah. So if I don't have a professional microphone, like if I anything that I'm doing away from my microphone, I'm recording it later because yeah. I can't handle this doesn't have a good speaker, guys. It, it really does. Or a good microphone. It, it's not anything like I see all these travel vloggers because like we're going on cruises and stuff and we like to check out these boats and all these people are doing it. And all you hear is the wind. And I'm like, that sounds yeah. terrible. It sounds yeah. terrible. How do you have a YouTube channel with 100,000 subscribers? And I don't <laughs> when your sound sounds like that. You so know? it's either it's either you you hear that terrible terrible wind noise or you look like that idiot that's walking around with those two dead cats that look like these giant <laughs> on your thing yeah. and then you're that guy right so yeah yeah, yeah. So, mm, mm. so anybody yeah. any special videos you guys are doing you guys doing a Christmas theme video I'm trying to think of a Christmas theme video but I don't want to do another tag I don't know. no uh, I'm trying I think to think my favorite Christmas movies last year yeah that's yeah. a good one that is a good um, one. I'm trying to come up with some videos that are going to come out during the like almost two weeks that I'm away. And I, I none of those are going to be really Christmas themes. I do have one coming out, which might just be because I didn't do a mid month kind of update check in, you know, video for December. I was going to do kind of a pre Christmas, you know, update video, let people know where I'm going to be, what I'm reading, blah, blah, blah. Wish everybody a Merry Christmas, that kind of thing, but not really anything super Christmassy. I'm going to wait until the new year and show off some gifts and stuff. Well, you know, if anybody it. does any, has any good video ideas for Christmas, let me know. Cause I can't think of one on my own. You know, I stole Madison's uh, yeah. Thanksgiving. Actually she tagged me. So I guess I didn't actually steal it, but uh, she came up with a Thanksgiving tag and that one was really fun, but mm. I have no idea what I'm going to do for Christmas, but I'd like to have a video on Christmas day. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I think I'm nice. gonna review the stand and make you very angry. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Oh, nice Christmas. Bitch. <laughs> yeah, it's it's great Christmas idea. Great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Uh, and then, the bookshelf tour. Um, and then I'm going to review Jurassic Park too. Nice. 
Uh, and yeah, I think that, oh, I was going to do a list of my favorite nonfiction books. Mm. Uh, so I don't know if any of you have done that before, but. I want to, too. Because I read a oh, lot yeah. of memoirs and stuff too. Yeah, only the nonfiction I do is you know rock biographies and JFK assassination stuff. That's pretty yeah. much it. Everything else is it's pure fiction. Yeah. yeah. My wife got really obsessed. You guys remember that podcast that came out a couple of years ago called Serial: The Unsolved mm -hmm. Murder. My wife listened to that and she fell down a rabbit hole of nothing but like wrongfully accused stuff. <laughs> So that's all she was reading for like six, seven years. Like, remember when you used to read fantasy? So I've started to slowly get her back. You know, she read Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn. She read uh, she read the Royce and Hadrian books. You know, but outside of that, it's like she's finally starting to come back around. So I'm excited about that. So she's, she's got that out of her system. But what, what nonfiction do you read? Is it is it mostly like just history? Who, me? Yeah. You're yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I read like a lot of, I teach AP language at my school. So um, I, like this year I taught Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass, a book by Richard Holmes called Age of Wonder, which is about the second scientific revolution. Uh, I did Devil in the White City, um, uh, which is about the Chicago World's Fair. Um, the Righteous Mind is by Jonathan Haidt, Why Good People Are Divided yeah, by Politics and Religion. Me. Well, Anyways, I read a lot of nonfiction and I never make videos about all the books that I read. You should. Um, yeah. and I so gotta think there's gotta be a like market for it out there because there's a billion fantasy booktubers yeah. out there. Yeah. So you know there's, there's gotta, gotta be other smart people yeah. too. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know Philip will be watching, you know. Philip will be watching for yeah. sure. Yeah. So well, I want to thank you guys for taking this time to uh to talk to me on a Saturday night, you know, loser like me, you know, doing nothing <laughs> on a Saturday night. Uh uh, I don't know really what else to say except you guys rock. I'm glad you thanks guys for having us. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thanks Mike. for having yeah. us, Mike. It's Blast. my pleasure, man. I'm glad you guys said yes. This is probably the easiest coordination I've had for one of these. The first three people I asked said yes, and they were all available on the same day. It was great. Usually, it's always have one person who's like, ah, I don't really know those other people, so I don't want to. You know, and, <laughs> fine. I mean, I could talk to anybody. It's not a problem for me. But I get that not everybody can do that. Yeah, we can do yeah. that, but, uh, you guys were a delight. Thank you so much. Yeah, I had and to I really think about it because I knew Theo was going to be on. And I, I know that guy's a shady character. I appreciate you guys sticking it out with me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it, for real. I mean, it's like Rachel earlier said, Oh, I don't know if I'll be able to handle these 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 three beers. I was like, What well, I got to beer, especially not compared to these two. And these two are just they, they got it going. You know? Theo's got the, the non beard corner. I know. The I always be like, <laughs> the, the Captain right Riker now. gifts from Star Trek with ever Theo, and I'm like, Look. Tell me I'm wrong. Show Honestly, me right now I'm gaining weight in the cheeks and I'm trimming the beard too thin. So I'm kind of like disproportionate right now, but I'm, yeah, but I'm you shape yours. It really together. does look, it looks sculpted. It looks oh, good. I don't yeah. know how to shape mine. I appreciate it. Yeah. I'm trying anyway. I just, I don't, I don't like a beard too much gray. It doesn't look as good as you guys, but uh, oh, with so, me, it, my wife doesn't like it when I shave clean. Very well. recently I went to go get a hair. I know we're going to cut it off, but I went to go get a haircut and I looked down and there's this hair everywhere. And most of it was gray. And I looked at my barber and like, whose hair is this? And like, it's all mine from the side, like the beard. Every, I mean, I usually do my own beard, but on Dude, the sides, it was the club. all gray. Oh my God. I couldn't believe it. I, from right now, salt, you can't tell. But up Is close, your wife into the salt and pepper look? If so, you're, you're great. She'll you're have great. no choice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> mine, mine will have no choice. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys for the, the, the watch with us. We really appreciate you guys hanging out with us on a Saturday night. Uh, hopefully you guys, uh, you know, are like us and don't have much of a life. I feel like most readers don't really go out on Saturday nights, you know, no, I feel like this that's is what it. makes us readers. Right. But <laughs> you know, yeah, not all of us are going to Disneyland and stuff or Disney world. Sorry. Disney world stuff. Hey, are you going to use Harry Potter while you're there? The, the yeah. We're going to go to universal for two that's days. And so we're going to cool. do all that. I'm super excited. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I feel like when we finally go, it's going to be like, Oh, it's gone now. But, no, no. It'll be there forever. I bet. Yeah. Yeah, I go to like any bookstore and like there's still like a Harry Potter section. Oh, yeah. At a store. Amazing. And I look at it and I say, man, I can't believe Tori hasn't read this. You know, Sorry. crazy. <laughs> I will. I'll read the best thing about it is it's never too that. late. And there's some beautiful, beautiful illustrated editions out there that we oh, so yeah. killer to read from. Oh, I just yeah. got yeah. actually uh, Medic sent me this as a gift. They're so He's pretty. Awesome Isn't Medic the best? Name. He's like booktube He's just, Santa. I love yeah, that guy. Amazing. He sent me. The pictures in here are incredible, you guys. He sent um, this to me just this this week. So nice. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. Did you not have that? that? 
I'm I have part surprised. one. I didn't. Have, I didn't get. I didn't even know part two was out yet. They're breaking it up into three parts, like, Very the, like cool. the actual novel is. Very and, cool. you know, uh, Brian Herbert's got to keep getting money from his dad's name somehow, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But all right, guys, thanks so much for joining so me much. and everybody who stayed in the comments all the time. We appreciate it. And everyone have a great, great weekend.